Welcome to the show. Hi guys. Yes, welcome to the stream. This is a day. I uh, last night was. I mean, yes, last night. Is this today, right? But in the summer cup, uh, with Sai and company, it was a uh, quite a long draft, seven hours for me. Started at about slightly after this time, yeah, which is midnight for me. Normally, you don't see me streaming for more than what, two hours. I was up for about seven yesterday. And uh, yeah, it is tiring. Um, especially when you think about it, you start at about 12 and you end up at 7 a.m. Well, all things considered, I got off to a very cold start. But I managed to push into the... Managed to push into the top five before I before we had started getting issues, right? And uh, they had to call it. I think we played only about 11 games. Yeah. It's a bit of a disappointment. And uh, and we're going to talk about strikeless systems today. We're going to craft a few. Uh, I'm going to craft one or two. But essentially, the idea here is to talk about... I'm not I'm not claiming I'm a pro strikeless person, right? Okay, I'm not. But one thing, we don't have a lot of strikeless systems by the AI. So whenever we build strikeless systems, it's more like, hey... That's, you know, there's nothing to, you know, we can only test it against the AI. So when you want to make, I mean, you play a 4-2-3-1, you play against the AI, sometimes the AI comes back at you with a 4-2-3-1, right? So it's easy to find out where your 4 2 3, one stacks against that 4 2 3, one So generally when two formations go head to head, it's usually the better formation with the better players. Okay, but um, then you've got to, what do you do with strikeless systems then? When two strikeless systems go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, that's when you may be, you might be able to tell the difference between the two. Uh, but if the AI is not playing enough of them, it's pretty hard for you to judge. So the only reason, so this is the reason why I'm taking part in so many of these draft competitions because I want to understand more about strikeless systems. So the good thing is on our Discord, we've got BK Eaton, who's very good at strikeless systems. Uh, so much so that he's already... I mean, he's won a lot of these uh, draft competitions we've organized with his strikeless systems. And uh, along the way, I've been working on my own strikeless systems. Now, I do understand the principles because of how they might work for the engine against the engine uh, and how you get them to work. And I have made a few work. In fact, I used the strikeless system last night intentionally against a specific formation because I knew that that formation would struggle against the strikeless system. And true enough, we won that game. So I'm going to do a um, longer stream today. But tomorrow, yes, I'm hoping I get it edited by tomorrow. On tomorrow's show, I'm going to do a shorter little guide on strikeless systems, like the basic principles. Uh, craft one or two examples and show you what to look out for when you make your own. So that will be the objective of the show. So tomorrow, today, we're going to be... Spending a bit more time crafting them and trying them out. Castle for debating on if I should get FM21. I mean, if you are this late in the cycle. If you can off okay, basically it's the same thing, right? Okay, like okay, if you if you buy FM21 now, you're getting on the tail end of the cycle. So the good news is what you see is what you get. And you get it cheap. The bad news is, um, 
when FM22 releases and if they have some great features, then you sit down and you go, damn, I should have gotten FM22. Now, I see everyone playing FM22 and I want to play FM22. Okay. Everybody likes a new toy. But at the start of that cycle, there are going to be bugs. So question is, can you... I guarantee you there'll be bugs. Yeah, there'll be issues. I mean, there's never been an FM which comes out perfect out of the gate. Never. Right. It takes up to about, what, Christmas? Before you start going, okay, yeah, maybe I want to get the game. So if I were you, I'd hold off. To, if you're going to ask that question, then I'd hold off to Christmas for the offer because there's bound to be an offer. And I'll get it in. Uh, I'll get the FM21 now. That's what I would do. Right? Um, there are issues with FM21. Right? There are, there are some issues. Uh, they're not game-breaking in the sense that, oh my God, I can't play the game because of this issue. No, the, None of those exist in the game, right? Um, there are workarounds to some issues. Um, there are bugs in the game that have been there since FM17. So if you're hoping to see the bugs improve, then you know, some bugs have been there since FM17. Uh, issue, issue, UI issues more than bugs. Like, okay? but I call them bugs because as long as they are not supposed to be there, I call them a bug. Um, but it's a UI issue that does not in any way impact the playability of the game. However, they do mislead people. The, the bug I'm talking about is the UI bug for trading, which has been there since FM17, which is my personal bane. I hate that with a vengeance. Because every year I have to say the same thing over and over again to people. People come in and say, no, but it carries over to the next day. And I go, you know, it doesn't. The trading bonuses don't. And then uh, we had um, Cake Man, right? Cake Man went and, went and reported the match practice bug. As I would say, they went and fixed it and then he broke it again and the match practice bug returned. Now, as far as I'm aware, as far as I'm aware, it shouldn't affect the familiarity right it should just continue to uh, give you the development of those attributes which is then becomes a which then becomes an issue because you're not supposed to be able to do match practice three times a week because if you do match practice three times a week and it records that as uh, improvement in attributes then it's unfair because then you can develop roles very effectively in the game. So, so for people like me, I don't I ignore it because I know it's not part of the game design. Okay, which brings me to my next point: strikeless systems, right? A strikeless system is meant to be in the game. Well, they are in the game. The AI uses them. Unfortunately for us, the AI uses them once every four years <laughs> or oh, shit like that. Okay, like. I want I want underdog sites because strikeless systems are essentially defensive systems. They're not offensive. They're not attacking systems. Yeah, they park everybody behind the ball, so they are not attacking systems. They're defensive systems, right? Um, sometimes, if you want to build an Arigo Sachi attacking system, you might want to think about a, a strikeless system because you know your distance between your strikers and your backline is so short. So, so. Yeah, it's part and parcel of the game. It's just the AI doesn't use them enough. Strikeless is probably your favorite system in FM. Great to see how we all got not one but two different types. Yeah, we're gonna work on two today. I'm gonna work on two. Uh, yeah, it's not if it's uh, it's not a matter of price. Then mate, if if you are with you and you even got FM twenty one, go get it now because it's dirt cheap, man. Like, it, yeah, it's cheap. Then get in and then come and play with us. Fancy draft, brother. I guess this is a bit more of a general question we experience in the game, but do you feel crossing needs a rework? What do you mean by crossing needs a rework? You mean to say, make it easier to cross the ball? Well, okay. This is a very, very interesting question. I, I gotta admit that there are times when I feel the game should make it easier to cross the ball, right? But it's, there's this fine line that we have to walk with the game. Okay. If I were to make a tactic with wingbacks and white midfielders, I get a crossing heavy tactic. If I pick wingback, white midfielder, target man, I guarantee you, all I get is crosses. Then the type of crosses, then you with, 
then you get like tung 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 all day long. Uh, whether or not those crosses get in, meaning your player gets to connect and then hit it towards goal, that's a different math altogether, right? But um, I know that we had an issue with crossing early in the cycle of FM21, right? And as I tweaked it, but it was essentially kind of hard to get those crosses in. Not only crosses, you know, you want the guy to go to the byline and then go, hey, I can't cross the ball. I can't beat this player. Let me turn back and give it to somebody else. That's what everybody wanted. Problem was, not everybody was creating tactics like that. Right? Everybody was making, and they, until I started shouting and everyone go like, stop using um, mixed crosses. Start using low crosses. You got to see cutbacks, right? So then we started seeing more crosses. And then um, we've got certain roles and duties, like the wing back, for example, right? He, he go he he just drives down and starts looking for an opportunity to cross the ball. But if you play the wing back with certain roles, then he works with those roles to get crosses in. So whew, you can get crosses to go in go in right now, but I think that the decision making of the player when he gets to the flank has to be improved slightly. Yeah. Uh it's 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 too easy for them to block the cross. The AI decision making for defending is a slight tweak. But this is the problem for SI. Okay, this is the, this is the fundamental problem. Okay, a lot of people don't understand the um the development cycle of the game. All right, how how they actually work on the match engine. All right. The match engine is basically eight I mean at last count is eight minutes, probably about 10 million lines of code right now. But it's eight million lines of code. That was when I was when I was helping out in uh, uh, FM12. But now it's much more, I guess. Um, and they've got they've got uh, slices as well now in the engine. So um, they try to translate the football based on the numbers, right? So you've got all these attributes. The attributes lead to certain. Uh, so you you create this uh, environment where players are going to behave in a certain way and then those attributes guide whether those be, the, the behavior makes sense or the behavior is good. And then they take that and then they have to translate it into a graphical representation that you can understand. Right? Up to that point, the only person who understood that was the developer. Okay, not you. It was the developer who was sitting there going, this is what we need. This is what we need. So that's the developer. That's Paul, right? Paul and Mark. These are basically the two guys at the top of the food chain. Today, Paul is somewhere in Scandinavia and Mark is somewhere in the Mediterranean. Okay, so you've got other people working on the engine nowadays. Um, so when we do all this, so for them, when you when you see a movement and then you see a what do you what do you think is crossing doesn't work, it's not because of anything else. We have to be the ones that go and give them the situations, right? Oh, when I do this, I do this, I do this, the crossing doesn't work. So you send in the PKMs and then you explain why the crossing has to work so that they, when they go back into the game, they go like, okay, fine. The, the, he makes sense because he had the player there. Why didn't he turn around and give him the ball? Then it makes sense. Like, I've done that a few times. I go like, okay, guys, seriously, the guy, he's at this point, he should be, he, it's not like he can't see the player beside him, but why does he want to go and try and beat him when that guy is obviously Virgil van Dijk? He's not going to beat Virgil van Dijk. So isn't it better to pass it to the player that's free so that he can cross the ball? And then the crossing improves slightly. Right, so then we had the, the crossing improve last season. So it takes a lot of work though. It's not easy. It, I would agree that crossing is a slight rework, but it's going to be... They need lots of PKMs. They need lots of case. Uh, that's how the engine gets worked on, right? So if you think the defending needs help, then you have to... I'm not saying that we have to prove it to them. But if you honestly think that you're a... You, you, because they have their own football pros in the house, right? They actually send, they actually bring coaches down, ask them to view the video and they go like, do you think this is correct? You go, the coaches go like, yes, this is correct. These are pros, man. <laughs> so FIFA coaches, FIFA coaches and football pros, they go like, yeah. Look at this big ass TV screen there, they all watch. They got like a studio where everybody sits down, eats popcorn and candy. Right, AI. Yeah. yeah. The guy should have crossed the ball. He piece of shit. Go out on the engine. That's basically what they do, right? It's okay. So 
who are we <laughs> but mere mortals in their presence? So we have to prove our case to them. So we, I look, I know I've I've had to do it before. Like I once had to prove that there was an issue with a certain role, right? And I had to give like 20 PKMs, two game saves, a breakdown of my tactic. Right, everything. I had to like lock stock in smoking barrel, man. Doesn't work. Took a while. I kept hammering and hammering and hammering. Then he finally got in. But sometimes he doesn't. Sometimes he don't listen to me. Right? Who am I? I'm but a mere mortal. So it takes a little take. Off. Sorry for the long bloated round the camel's ass answer. We want to get to this. Uh, Pep Guardiola recreation, please. We're not doing a recreation. We're talking about the principles of strikers. Because if I teach you the principles, you'll be able to make your own. Right? So, strikers, right? But then, yeah, I love strikers, exactly. I love strikers, but I hate them in drafts. The only reason why I hate them in drafts, I don't, actually, I love them. I love facing a striker system. Like, stick, stick is like the go-to right now, right? For all of us. I mean, I think I made a striker system and I, I beat somebody 4-0. And then I meet... I mean, stick and his strikeless system is very different because his strikeless system actually makes sense, right? When I'm sitting down there going, I'm playing against him, I'm going like, oh shit, this strikeless system is good. Now I'm in trouble. I mean, he was laughing. I mean, he wasn't laughing. He felt sorry for me because I had to put Milankovic Savic on the flank as a winger. Like, who the f does that, man? I did it because I had no choice. I was like going, shit, he's got options down the flanks. He's working the ball down the flanks. I've got to shut him off. He's not coming through the middle. There's no point defending the middle. And then I run out of options. Because uh, I had to change my tactic. And then because Stick uses the same formation and he um, mutates that, that number, the formation over time. See, that's the thing about strikeless systems. Against the AI, not that bad. Eh, we kick the AI's ass. It's so easy against... In fact, I'll discuss the easiest to create strikeless systems and the much more harder ones. And there are certain things that are very common to all of them. The camp behind the camp is gonna ban, man. I mean, a very simple. Yeah, you can make simple, but you got you got to have to think about certain things. Okay, all right. Let's let's just get on with this, right? Let's not dawdle too much. Okay, all right. First up, okay. Let's talk about the the fundamental aspects of a strike this system, right? Okay, let's ignore these these things first. Let's talk about all this, like all these team instructions, right? First thing you want to understand is you know the le the fewer the better. Okay, the reason is underlaps. Okay. Strikeless systems are essentially flat, right? Because they, they don't use all the tiers, right? These are This is tier 1, this is tier 2, this is tier 3, this is tier 4, this is tier 5. So these are all tiers, right? These are vertical tiers. They create what is the depth of a formation. Now, a strikeless system is essentially flat. Now, it gets worse with fluidity. It gets worse with fluidity. Why? Because fluidity creates units. Units are those players that are going to focus on a specific task. I can only explain it in this terms because to go any deeper would be too confusing. Okay? Alright. So, I'll just say, say this much. There are five levels of fluidity. Now, the fluidity isn't meant to be something you aim for. It's something for you to understand. Now, what this means is that each player has going to have distinct level. Like, they're going to be when, when you have highly structured and structured. I'm a pro at highly structured. Okay? I'm a literal pro at it because I should know that Fluidity inside out. Uh, okay, so I won't say why, but a structured fl uh, fluidity literally means that you've got different units. Now, what it means is um, this: you'll have like a, a distinctive defending unit, a distinctive supporting unit, and a distinctive attacking unit, right? So when you have this, it means that you've got to have three groups of players that are involved in different phases of the game. But if you have a fluid, fluid uh fluidity okay you gotta have one ja one jing bang gang all devoted to the same shit okay so they all go up together and all, all the kumbaya back together it's a problem for striker systems okay unless you are unless you know okay this is where i would recommend for the person making the striker system for the first time avoid fluid right avoid fluid because you need to understand what's going to happen when you hit certain team instructions okay now, I would recommend to most people go out there and make a structured one first if it's the first time you do it. For the more advanced players who are very familiar with uh, the team instructions, 
yes, you can experiment with fluid because it makes for some very in, very interesting setups. Like for example, you can get everybody to defend in a block, and then you can hit hard on the counter with one attacking duty or two, right? So it becomes like okay, let me ex yeah, basically uh, again like I, I won't go into that right now. So I just I just explain the fluidity first. All right, the second thing you have to understand is um, we've got this. Higher defensive line and your line of engagement. Now, if you notice one thing, when you play a strikeless system, right? When you play this, you got you, this guy can jump all the way here and do all his work, right? When you play strikeless systems, this line of engagement is affected because the upper limit. Because you see, your line of engagement is defined by your freaking strikers. Okay, it's not defined by anything else. It's where your strikers begin their press. You know, your strikers lead engagement the press of the whole team so when you define your line of engagement this is where it starts so let's say put him here now go see let's put all our players here now well oh, mary band of warriors now you come back here i don't know where i'm gonna stick you see this so your line of engagement you can't go any higher than this so your your engagement line depends on this guy the striker, whoever you have the furthest forward, he is the guy that triggers the line of engagement. So when you do your press, he is the one that kicks everybody into shape, right? So this is something you can understand. So when you do a strikeless system, okay, there's some strikeless shapes that are very nice, okay? So, so let's say we, you know, we don't do this, this is horrible, okay? So let's do this, okay? This is like a basic strikeless system, right? So Okay, so you've got this, and then what happens is you see this green, there's two, there's several colors, right? This. And then you got this shade. This is the zones, right? So this, this is the final third. I mean, this whole thing is the final third. This is the defense, this is the whatever you want to call it, the penalty area. You got another zone here, another zone here. But you see this, this group, they're in this zone. So they are going to press in the opponent's half, very close to their box. High line of engagement. You can even go further up again, but then you create the gaps within this area. Okay, so you have to understand how your engagement line works, right? Now, the too high a defensive line, and you become a problem. It becomes a problem for yourself. You will find very, very few guys playing strikeless systems. Those good strikeless, very few of them will play this. Like almost none. The ones that are good, right? Most strikeless systems will either be standard, higher. Stand, standard is not. What does this do? This influences your backline. How high up the pitch you want to go. This influences them as well. So you got this. This is pretty okay, right? So you can do it like this, or you can do it like this. Doesn't really matter. I mean, it does, but it's okay. So we've got that. We sorted that out. Okay. Now, this. Now we come to the interesting part. Okay. This is the other mistake I see people making: counter press or counter. It will depend entirely on your rules. This is when I will say it depends on your rules. Okay. Let's look at this, right? Now, let's assume we make a counter pressing system like this: a four one four one. Hey, Maximo, which are you, man? 343 Cyclist is quite a good... Uh, I've got a 343 Cyclist, but it's not all powerful. I mean, against the AI, the 343 Cyclist is very, very good. But against the human, good luck to you. Good luck to you. I'm telling you right now, against a player who knows his Cyclist systems, he's going to modify it because you've got a, you've got a, you've got an obvious vulnerability, right? Like yesterday, I was playing... Um, I was playing against someone and then um, I played a strike this system. I took a lead. She was playing a 4 2 4 and I was like sitting down there comfortably thinking, hey man, I got this game and I, I don't need to do anything. So I was talking to her and I was looking off camera, you know. I was looking, literally looking off screen. I was looking at my caps, thinking, wondering what cap I was going to wear next, right? So I was thinking, yeah, I win this game, I'm going to switch that cap. Yeah, talking to her, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was cocky and confident, right? So that I was talking to her. And then as I'm looking there, I don't notice that she cha had changed the formation. She went strikeless and she went with a very specific role, a uh, specific position that she had. And my my strikeless system was meant was gonna go all over 424. But when she changed her role, my strikeless system got nuked. Immediately. So at the moment I looked at the monitor, I knew I was gonna lose if I didn't change. And she scored a goal almost immediately. And that's on key highlights, man. Shit. Okay, so we've got this. Uh, nah. Okay, I'll explain. I'll explain. No, we will forget the duties right now. We just want to look at this first, right? Okay, so let's look at this, right? So we got a 4-1-4-1 strikeless right here. 
right? Very simple, right? It's a, it's, it's a very basic one. Okay, but we're not looking at the, we ignore the roles and duties. I'm only looking at counter and counter press right now. Okay, look, let's look at this. Okay, now I want you to look at this, right? When you counter press, one, two, three, four, five, six, go after the ball. Okay, when you counter, it's okay. Count, let's ignore counter. Everybody wants a counter, right? It's okay, fine. In counter, pre in, a, in a strikeless tactic, if you don't have this on, go and uh, give up. Give up on the game and go and, you know, learn how to play Pokemon or whatever, you know. Just don't play football manager anymore. Okay. Because if you if you want to play strikeless, the whole idea is to counter. All right. Strikeless systems are all about the counter because strikeless systems are defensive. Okay. You, you want this. You don't want this. You win the ball back. Hey, hey, let's, let's hold our shape, man. Okay. This is definitely not something. So all strikeless systems are going to have this counter right this one it depends okay because in a strikeless system you are sitting you're sitting off the defensive third right so you sometimes are going to counter press sometimes you're going to regroup it'll depend on how you set yourself up now what happens in a counter press system is you are trying to you in a counter pressing system you are trying to flood the center and you are trying to make it hard for the opposition to get control of the ball your numbers in midfield allow you to keep the ball away from the opposition and create goal scoring opportunities for yourself a good count a good strikeless system will always be able to control possession of the ball a poor counter a poor strikeless system okay is going to fail at winning back the ball right so if you have the ball and you lose the ball one two three four five six are going to try and win the ball back so they are going to step up now what happens if the opposition has an amc here or two ams here or they have an attacking mazala coming in you might have a problem right so so when you have these positions if these guys drop back then they they have to like basically uh this er entire area is now a problem because all you guys if, especially if they're attacking DT, if you are counter-pressing and you lose the ball, one, two, three, four, five, six are going to try and attack. So what they do is they step up. Now, in the engine, it's very hard to see this, but you know you notice it when you go, oh shit, why are they not defending? The ball goes over, over the top and you are, I can see the goal, right? That's because this has happened, right? So they step up. When they step up, these four go, they, they start praying to Jesus, okay? All right? And then they have a slight problem. They got one, they've got one uh Jamie Vardy running at them. They're gonna go like, oh my god, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Okay. All right. So so you got this. So you have to understand this. Now there are times when certain strikeless systems, which already have numbers in midfield, like this. Like say, assume now if you have a strikeless system like this, right? This strikeless system. If it goes, it, if it's shaped like this, what would you use? If you use counter press the strikeless system, you might get into a lot of trouble. Why? Because these two guys are going to leave the space in front of the midfielders and charge up the pitch. If you lose the ball here, which is going to happen, if the other team, assume that your two players here are not as good as the midfield. So these two are going to go to war in this area because the sec... Whenever there's a second ball battle going on in this gap, right? Between your, the gap between your strikers and your midfielders, then you might run into trouble. If you lose the ball here, because they stepped up trying to win the ball, you open your defense up. So certain formations actually make sense to do this. This will pull the two strikers in front back so that you win the ball. Because in a strikeless system, you are more interested in this than this. You're not, this counter press and regroup, only some of the time. Certain formations because this already has two here. But if you have one here, like this, this is a different trackless setup. Now, this is actually a very nice trackless setup because you've got plenty of options. This guy can win the ball, will help you win the ball if during the counter press, right? So he can step up. Right? This guy can help you win. This guy can can still, if you use him like a certain role, like certain roles. I'm not a big fan of the halfback, okay? Because they got a big zone. The anchor man is brilliant. Okay. So he's not gonna run too far. And guess what now? These two roles can be a bit more. You can play inverted wing backs on defense. Or inverted wing I I would not rec because you got in strikeless systems, chances are all these are gonna be on attack. These guys will be on attack, right? So you might go some 
against the AI, it's very easy. Just go attack. Most of the time, you go attack. Right? These guys are going to win. The moment they win the ball, you do a counter attack through the channels. Right? Then these guys come in here during the transition. When, you, when you're controlling the ball, you got a W shape here. And then what will happen is these guys are going to be getting ready to attack. They'll all be on the line against the AI. So they def the, the AI will have a back four or back five. These four will be sitting on the back line. You got a W here. This row can be like a playmaking row or this row can be a playmaking row. And then they look for the players running between the lines. This is a very nice right to set up, right? And this in this one, it makes sense to counter press. I mean, we're not making this as a strike list tactic, of course. It's going to be something like this. Okay. So you use like inverted wing backs. Okay. Now, there are other strike list systems, right? Okay. You got a narrow three strike list system as well. So, whenever you think about strike list systems, you got to think about two things, right? And this is the mistake that I, I sometimes make. I mean, I make this a lot. I, I already learned this mistake last couple of weeks. Because I, I was playing a lot of strike list systems in draft mode just to understand what I was doing wrong. Okay. All right. The other thing about strike list systems, I'll give you one other strike. This is the most basic strike list system. Okay. This is strike list one, uh, 101. This is the easiest strike list system to make in the game. Like, there's no brain cell activity more. Okay. All right. Let's go. This is bulk basic. This bulk basic, right? Okay. Why? Because you put a, you took, you put an attacking midfielder attack here, or you put a at advanced playmaker on attack. You put a shadow striker here. You put a shadow striker here. Right. This role is a ball winning midfield on so You at least have one. You you need one to harry the opposition, right? Yeah. You literally want to put pressure on the opposition as they are building up play here, right? So you want a ball winner. Sometimes you have two. You can have two ball winners. Okay. Don't worry. Ball winners don't get sent off. According to popular myth, they do. Okay, these roles. What do you think these can do? This, this. If these guys go read, if these guys go pumping down the flanks, you're gonna concede goals. Against the AI, you can afford to play them as wing backs, right? But if these guys go bombing down the flanks, um, you're gonna open up the space here. So every time you lose the ball, you'll be in trouble. So this is the time when you go into this growth and go. Maybe you can. It's very simple. You want somebody to go to the byline to cross, but be a bit more safe. Or he 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 won't go to the byline. Rather, he go to the you uh, go somewhere here. You don't need these guys to go all the way up here. Like seriously, if these three guys cannot help you score goals, the idea here is not for you to go down to the byline, do a cross, and these guys score the goal. No, it's for the ball to come here, or come here, and then one two back on my shoe. He plays one into the into the space here. So, what do you think these guys are gonna be doing? They cross to the center because the. We got the playmaker in the center, right? So this is what we do, and then um, so essentially this is the this is another setup. This is very very basic. You can do ball winning midfielder, ball winning midfielder. I mean, um, this becomes very aggressive. Then you use something like an anchor here, or you can even go deal. If you're not so sure, then you go like, okay, I'm 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 too much of a coward, so I'll just go ball one ball winner, maybe a DLP because this guy holds position anyway, all right? And then you got maybe a DM here, or you can even put a DLP here. I mean, I'll probably go DM, Anchorman. Halfback is a problem. You know why? When the halfback, during the transition, right, the halfback drops. You can lose the ball. This is why you need a DLP. Because the DLP has drops deep and holds position. So when the halfback drops, he can give the ball either to the wing back, the ball. That's why the reasons why if you use a halfback, you better use ball playing defenders. Right? So that... The halfback, when he drops in, the ball playing defender can either carry the ball out or you have a DLP here who holds his position. So that, you know, the ball, so the a halfback is a good role, but it needs, you need to think about all the roles and duties around the halfback. Otherwise, what will happen is the halfback drops. You know, assume you're using like maybe Mazala, right? maybe you're a ballsy kind of character, right? <laughs> I'm going to teach these buggers a big lesson today. I'm going to play a Mazala. Yeah, these buggers don't know anything about football manager, man. I'm going to use a Mazala, Mazala. What do they know? I'm going to send his wing bear up. He's got Mazala for support, Mazala for support, yeah? Right. Actually works, though. <laughs> it actually does work. Yeah, I'll bet. Yeah, what do they know, man? Mazala will go here, support. Mazala will go here, support. Wing bear will come up. Gee, we'll get the ball up in no time. Yeah. 
Only problem is your halfback better be good at passing. Mazala better have comes deep to get the ball. That's all. I've seen people do this, right? It can work, it can work, but you gotta be very smart with your player choices. Right? So you gotta use a comes deep to get the ball. This Mazala has to have come deep because somebody has to come deep and you gotta work out for BPD. This can work. Okay, now the we got these formations, right? We've got other formations as well. There's one like something like this, right? I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go into too much detail. You guys have to discover this for yourself. This is actually not a bad. This is my, one of my personals. My I without the roles I do this is like one of my personal uh, setups. The three four three was like, ah three four three strike list. I have a three four three strike list. Uh, I have a three four three strike list. A four a few strike lists, but my strike list systems aren't that good, right? I mean against the AI, they they bomb bombastically good, man. So them look at this. Where's it? Bashitas? Where's Chit Chat? I think it was Rangers, right? We are fine out playing against Rangers. We use a we use this. This is like Bob basically. This is like this is like 101 uh strike list systems, right? Okay. And all the goals are gonna be like all three strikers scored goals. And this guy is just going through the middle. Uh, you know, getting um, you know, basically pinching every goal. And this thing about strike list systems, you are you are, you are profiting off the attacks, right? So they're attacking me and then we go counter. So we got a winger here, bombing down the flank. This is the reason why I want wingers giving the cross in. So all he does is drop in the cross. See, again, one, two. This is a simple through ball. Look at this. The whole idea behind a striker system is, you see, okay, we just have to look at this positioning, right? Okay. Okay. Let's go. We have to go all the way back. You got to be familiar with transitions. This starts from here. Okay. All right. So the goalkeeper has the ball. Whenever you make a strikeless system, this is really important. If you don't look at this kind of transitions, stop playing the game. Stop playing the game. Stop the game completely and then just go download the tactic because you never get good at the game. Okay. So you got Dalberg here. He's kicking the ball up, right? So you got all these buggers waiting, right? You want to see where the ball is won and by whom, right? So the ball goes up. This is why I sometimes use ball winners. See this guy? This guy is a ball winning midfielder. Okay. All right. So he's one of my ball winning midfielders. This guy is an anchor. This I think this guy was playing as an anchor. And this guy is like a DLP on support, right? So he wins the ball. Look at my ball winning midfielder on support. He's got gets further for, uh, he has gets into opposition and gets further forward, right? So he moves straight away. So he wins the ball, right? This is one of the reasons why all strikeless players, right? Every strikeless player is going to be after midfielders with jumping reach. You don't want a short ass in midfield. You want these guys. These guys are the best. So one of the reasons why, it's also one of the reasons why Milinkovic Savic is such a popular figure in striker for strikeless systems. Anybody who's making a strikeless system wants Savic as the AM in a strikeless setup. Because he'll be sitting in this hole. He'll be holding up the ball. He'll be very strong. He can win headers. So these guys can cross early towards him. And he can knock the ball down for these two. So we've got this guy. He's an AM, right? He holds up. the. I, I've got my AM on hold up ball. He's like a AM target man, right? So the, my my ball winner moves in. We get three now. So the whole, they're still on online. And now the DLP moves forward. This is the AM dropping back, holding up the ball. And the rest flood. So this is the thing about AI. AI is easy. But if I play this against a the human, then if the human is crafty, he's just going to have like maybe uh, two ball winners or I wouldn't say ball winners, but a static role somewhere around here for him to help, to help him win the ball back. So I've got, this is the reason why you also use ball playing defenders. See this? So this AM wins the ball, right? I get everybody flooding forward. It goes to the BPD. The BPD looks up and sees, what, what does he see? I just had to put the ball over the top and any one of these guys is going to go and score the goal. The first time he didn't get it off because you should see his uh, passing numbers. He's like the worst. He's like a 16 year He's like a 16 year old boy trying to play football. Among men. Okay. So then they go wide and then they come in again. So the BPDs will do this. Right. In a striker system, they flood like this, then the BPD will go down. But this is against the AI. Get me? I, I, I want to clarify this. Okay. AI is easy mode, strikers. All right. 
human is hard work strikers. Okay, there are some guys who are very good at striker system, so it's really an honor playing against them for me. It's like wow, I'm so impressed, man. So you got Dar Silva as the ball. Okay, there we go. This is what striker systems create: the movement, the chaos in uh, the the final third. Uh, I love this goal. This was a beautiful goal. Again, you see the what happens here. The again, they try to clear the ball. Why is this happening? Right. So we got to we got to track it all the way back, right? So I would like to track them from the like a dead ball situation. Like again, goalkeeper has the ball, right? Bang. Am I playing with? Okay, I never play with the offside trap when a striker system. Why? Because I want this. Okay. If I play with the offside trap, okay, you can't be offside from a goal kick, right? But um, he plays up, the boys track back, track back, track back. He hits the ball. We're still in a nice defensive position, right? Goes up. And then we got the we got one of my players. I don't know who this is. Oh, this is the AMA. Where is my this is my AM this is my AMA, this is my shadow striker. The left sided shadow striker. Right, this other shadow striker. Runs forward. Now it goes forward. See this this the anchor man. We got he's got uh he's got I think in this particular one I was I don't know whether I changed his role and duty. So you want to be able to keep sustained pressure on the AI, which is the reason why there's a time and a place for you to use counter pressing. There's a time and a place for you to use regroup. In some formations, if I was using inverted wing backs, I probably regroup because he's going to be here. So I, I want them to win the ball back quickly. Why? Because inverted wing back is here. If I lose the ball, the inverted wing back has to run from here to here. And he can, you know, and sometimes that can be an issue. So again, we win the ball back. Goes again, and then he is the AM. So my AM is actually the one TikToking the ball in the middle. So you, so the, in this narrow configuration, you can play an AMA or an AP. And I'll tell you something: in strikeless setups, BWM on support is my favorite. I've been using. I mean, I wouldn't say that it is my favorite. One of my favorite. Uh, roles, but against the AI, yeah, definitely one of my favorite roles. So this is easy to understand why it tonked the four two three one. I mean, you think about it. After my explanation, you probably understand why this setup completely destroyed the four two three one. These three guys and these three guys. What do you think happens to these two poor lads at the middle? Look at their ratings. The worst performing player was this guy, Ronaldo Vieira, the son of Patrick Vieira. I think. Yeah. This, they just couldn't get to the ball. These two guys completely... Because I put a... What we cook, you know, in football, right? You isolate players. It's a common term. It's a common way of playing, right? In the real world. You know, you try and shut down the midfield. Now, what do you mean by shutting down the midfield? It doesn't mean that you go there and tackle them until they, you know, send them to the hospital. It means that they don't get a chance to receive the ball, to do something with the ball. That's what we mean when we say shutting down the midfield. So... So that's one way of doing it, right? So we've got this striker setup. So okay, let's let's uh let's let's uh let's look at some strikers like this, right? I got a few. Am I sharing them? Okay, I got one called where's one? Bunga bomb. Okay, it is a striker tactic that I have. Now I don't like this striker tactic because it's very fluid. It's not one of my favorites, right? Okay, because it's got way too many. Uh, it's got too high of fluidity. So what? How do I fix this? This means that if I play this tactic tomorrow. Okay, against my friends. One chip from somebody is gonna find the ball, find it here. So how do I fix this? Okay, now this counter press, all four run out, right? So first thing I do is I regroup. Okay, that's the first option. The second option I can do is I want to keep the ball. I'll do this. Um, I'll probably do this. Going with the wing back on defense here. Okay, this guy can be a wing back on defense. Okay, I make it a bit more flexible. Then I probably don't need this to be a. This guy can be a ball playing defender. Uh, this guy can be a ball playing central midfield on defense. I don't need that. The goalkeeper should be on defense. Okay, all right. Um, now these two roles. This is not bad. He's like a ball winning midfielder. So how what what how does this work? Right. So we'll, we'll just play one game and see if this works. Now. Okay. I, I don't know. We'll just try it out. Okay. So we just play. 
Uh, we're playing Utrecht away. Let's just holiday mode all the way to Utrecht. Okay, we're there. We're playing Ajax, man. Holy shit! <laughs> My experiment is against Ajax. Holy shit, this is not going to be easy, man. Strikeless is defensive. It's not an attacking tactic. 100% is not an attack. Strikeless is not an attacking formation. So don't go there thinking my strikeless tactic. Why does my strikeless tactic produce uh, only produce 10 shots on goal and why do I have lower possession than the opposition? Hey, strikeless is defensive. No, it's not attacking tactic. It's not. It's not. Uh, I play it on very attacking. Okay. The final thing about strikeless tactics is this, right? You're playing it on positive attacking or very attacking mentalities. I personally play on very attacking mentalities. Okay, so now I've got this strike. Okay, we're not going to work ball into box. I'm going to keep things really simple. I'm going to go out to the flanks as early as I can. Okay, now the question is, do I want to use a volante? Okay, I'm not going to use a volante. I'm going to use a deer. I'm going to just use a DLP on support. Okay, just keep him oh, just keep him anchored here. Then we get this guy. Mm, if I do... Okay, we'll just we'll just see what it, what happens. Okay. Uh, like I don't know who's who. Okay. Yeah, I'll, oh, what, uh, say, I know this guy. This guy can't tackle to save his life. <laughs> okay, so he's not. Okay, Lima is going to come here. Uh, I had somebody there that could tackle. This guy, okay. All right, now let's go and look for uh, a what, DM. Ribeiro, can you defend? Oh, you can. Okay, you come. Sun, 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 you come here. Okay, we've got defender, defender. Ball winner. Um, yeah, you. Cut inside with the ball. Can you cross? That's what you're looking for right now. Okay. So right footer on the right flank. This guy. Left. Okay, I'm gonna swap them around. Okay, so we got crews here. I mean, do I use any PIs again? I mean, actually you don't need let's just let's just remove all the PIs. This is more complicated one. Alright, so we got all the PIs. So I'm gonna look at all the PIs, right? You know any PIs? Now, they say that strikeless system need a lot of PIs, right? Okay, we're going to remove them. I don't know. Shoot less often, maybe for this group, yeah. You want them to shoot, don't want them to shoot, because you want them to be able to pass, okay? Uh, I I'm going to remove the roam. I'm going to remove the roam. Okay. But I'm going to add tackle harder. Because against the AI, you can afford to. Eh? Yeah? Oh, sorry. Okay, we're just going to go in here and just hit tackle harder on everyone. Okay, that's it. All right, done. Now, um, counter, counter, press. These guys drop in. Okay, do I have inverter wing backs? I got one. Okay. Um, this guy can be a CD. This guy's gonna be a ball playing defender. He'll work. Okay, let's go. Let's find out. Let's find out. Okay, how it works. Okay. Okay. What am I paying attention to, right? I'm only paying attention to the transitions with the, involving the ball. I mean, I am not. I'm not optimistic about BT. Strikers, Mister, is not a cheat code, right? It doesn't mean that your team is jack shit. Is gonna win every single game because you're using strikers. No, it doesn't work that way because a, another team might be better. Uh, might have better players, but striker systems are essentially more defensive. So if, once you understand that, you'll be fine, right? You are trying to make it harder. You're trying to make it hard for the opposition to win the ball. Look at that. All right? It doesn't always work that way. Okay. We are not doing so well, man. Okay, I'm going to have to keep it simple. Go we'll focus, play left, focus, play right. Okay. Intent, out of position. I'm going to drop my mentality slightly to attacking. Or pos no, not positive. Attacking. Ay, ay, ay. So I made a mistake there. My mentality was too high. And my players, you know, just, just gave the ball away. Strikeless systems can't afford to give the ball away. So you, you got to win the second ball. Now this is the counter pressing. That's why the Lamer can get back into position. Okay, that was not too bad. The inverter winger is looking for the option. Oh, the other thing about strikeless systems, I forgot to mention. I forgot to mention this. You pay a premium, right? If they play in the wrong position. Okay, you don't want to do that. I just realized... Don't play uh, players out of position. Right? Don't do that. It's going to be a problem for you in the long run. Because uh, you're, already playing, you're already playing a unique formation. You don't want to make it harder for yourself by um, 
by um, what? By having to deal with your players making mistakes. Okay. That's looking a lot better now, but you know, this, at least I'm getting the ball up the pitch, right? So the question now is whether I can get a shot on goal. That's it. Gotta understand, I've just taken over this club, right? I have not built this club. I've just taken, I don't even know these players. I just took I've taken over this club, like, you know, a couple of months ago. After my last job at Bashitas. And we're experimenting for the first time. With a system this team is not used to. Okay, we made a couple of tweaks and we got, like, we got up the pitch. Okay, I'm happy. Now I'm looking for players that are not performing. Yeah. There are mis what did the mis mistakes I made? I didn't look out for players that uh, I've got jumping. Just when I was like too lazy. I just went and looked for... Um, what did I look for? And <laughs> ask the ask me and choose the players, right? So um, what you want to do is you also want to make sure your midfielders have got jumping reach. I, I didn't do that. But it's something that you have to do because the you can see how important it is to try and win the ball in the middle, right? <laughs> yeah. So this is what you end up doing. You end up defending if they get the ball. And but once you defend, then you 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 want to hit them on a counter straight away. Oh no 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 no! Don't make these kind of mistakes. Uh don't play low crosses either. <laughs> Try not to play low crosses unless you are confident that you can keep the ball for. If you have a good team and you're always camping, yes, low crosses make sense. But if you're not a good team. Please don't make it harder for yourself by in by insisting that your players go down the flank. You see what happened? That's what we want. We want that kind of a diagonal ball. We want to release those players out on the flanks early. Okay. We managed to get one, but you know, we are having to fix it on the fly. <laughs> Indulge it out. <laughs> okay, in, out. There we go. Once again, to the breach. Okay, not too bad. Not too bad. It's getting better. Man, if we, if we get a result against this team, it'll be amazing, man. Ah, there we go. Ah, yeah, come on. That's the one. And he crosses. Okay, get there first. You see, that's what you're looking for, right? See, those, those are the small little things that you have to pay attention to. You see, I didn't get there in time. So he's already on a yellow card. That's why. So I'm gonna, this is the reason why we couldn't get there in time. Okay, I'm gonna against the AI. I'm gonna do this. I know what to do. Pull back on support. Okay, just move him up. The pull back is not gonna go down the byline, right? So the DLP is here. This guy is a. Uh, it's not too bad. Okay, Guerra. I mean, this is AI man. Come on, dodge it. Uh, I'm too. I wanna make sure that the guys can tackle. Gets it the ball and you need, you see, you can see the kind of players that you need, right? You're getting the balls, you're getting the attacks. So you're looking at things like height, jumping reach. That's why you need f either fast players or strong players, right? Eh, bang, bang, in, out. The whole flow of the game has changed. So we get these guys pressing and they put pressure and you see this guy is too deep, right? But this is a risk I'm taking. If I wanted him to be on the shoulder of this player, I'm playing wing back. But if my wing back doesn't win the ball, I'm in trouble, right? So something that you need to bear in mind. And then if you play a wing back on support, yeah, you probably can win the ball. But if he misses, you're in a lot, you know, you lose the ball because then you leave yourself open to the counter attack. So these are small little considerations you want to make. So when do you choose a fullback? When do you choose a wingback? It's entirely up to you how risk... Um, uh, well, how's your risk profile? Like? What kind of players do you have? If you have very good players, if you've got Nicolas Taglafico, then I will go, yeah, man. Play wingback because Taglafico is going to win the ball back. If you've got um, a fullback is me, then, you know, don't play fullback. Oh, that Kingsley Coleman idiot got out. <laughs> what a waste, man. You have stopped using counter press when it's working wonderfully. My defense more compact injuries are down. Yeah. 
Cycler systems don't need counter pressing on. You can have regroup. Regroup is perfectly okay. Right. So here we've got counter pressing. Each time we try to counter press, we try to win the ball. If we don't win the ball back, you see, counter press is this, right? You don't win the wall, ball back, you're in trouble. But in some setups, you want counter press. I think with inverted wing backs, you want counter press. Without inverted wing backs, just don't use, I mean, you don't have to use counter press. I mean, we were okay for a while until we started screwing shit up, right? Okay. Uh, that's a pity. You know, I'm losing this game. Maybe I should have stuck to something a bit more, this, what this team can do, but never mind. Such is life. We'll make another cycler system after this. Okay. What are we all, I have to identify all the mistakes that we made with this cycler system. All right, let's go to key highlights. Just let's go. Let's remember, you know, IX. What is final? 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 Okay, who do we have? Osilo, Mina, the silver inverter winger. I like this inverter winger, inverter. But that that only really works, right? If you've got very good players who can run inside and do this. But in this team, this guy is actually one of our top scorers. So we're gonna have to change things around. Mina da Silva, De Cruz, Guere. Diallo is a fullback, defender, DM. 13 anticipation. Okay, he's not that bad, but not fast enough. Okay. Uh, when Donglan defending Jampirish 13 can can hit to save the day. And then we've got this guy also can't hit to save the day. We've got no composure. It's a ball, it's a, probably the worst ball playing defender in the history of ball playing defenders. And we've got Lamo, who's half decent, not too fast, 13. Likes to break a few legs along the way. He's got a poor sense of positioning and always picks up a yellow card if you use him too aggressively. Okay. Uh oh. Yeah, it can be tricky, but actually against a 4-2-3-1, this is a stupid setup. You know, what I should have played is probably... I will probably play this. Do I have time? We have 15. Okay, wait, hold on. I've got a striker system for this. No. This is a different striker system. Okay. Guerra there, ball winner. Da Silva plays one two, likes to switch ball to white areas. Mm, not so good. Oh, uh, here. Are you jumping reach? Mm, short ass. Okay. Cruz, midfielder right, not so good. Mm, Ribeiro. Now I've got a lot of poor players playing here. Marcelo, again. Diallo, Vendongerlin, Cruz, what are you? Okay, we're going to have to find a defender, man. Dog. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, yeah, I'll put you here, I'll put you here. I know you are not much of a ball winner, but hell man, let's hope for the best. Okay, the Silva, Mina, or Silo. I remember I played, but I can't remember who I used the last time around. Uh, Damari Gray, Adam Onas. Okay, all right. Mm, okay, let's go. Um, counter, counter, press. We're going to regroup. Okay. Ball winning midfielder, Mazala. I'm trying to shut down their two here in midfield. I mean, it's gonna be harder, right? Because you're playing a four, of you're playing against a four-two-three-one, right? Like so, I mean, this you're banking on your your wing backs not giving up too much space. So, the idea here is basically 
to use raw numbers here to put their two midfielders under pressure and then you know i'm taking a lot of risks to underlaps right so i'm removing the underlaps then i'm just pushing through the middle trying to win the ball back and we hit them because they're going to have the issue that the channels between their fullbacks is exploitable against the 4 2 3 1. So you can exploit this space here with these guys. So I can actually change this. Um, I mean, this is like a Shadow Striker EM EM. So this guy becomes the, the goal scoring threat. And then there's another setup where you have this guy as a hold up man and these two are the goal scoring threats. Under, fortunately. Come on. Let's go. Ah! You can see the goal. We're trying, man. We're trying. We're trying. Hey, wasted possession. How are you, man? How are you guys doing? So, basically, like, you know, you want to make... A, I, mean, I mean, we're trying to do miracles with this team, but never mind. Okay. We're going to modify this for the next game, right? For this team, we're going to modify. I'm going to modify it to this guy being the holdup, man, because I don't think they have too many strong players. And then we're going to turn these two guys into the Shadow Strikers to attack. We can maintain the same posture. And it's IX. Never mind. We give it to them. Bloody useless piece of shits. We should have, we should have won this game. If I noticed this earlier. There are other striker setups. You can go wide as well. Against a 4 2 3 1, at least then it'll be a bit more sensible. Okay, we'll make a second strike list like that, okay? Just get out of this. My career is probably over here. I lost to bloody uh I lost to bloody IX, man, of all teams. I feel like smashing something right now. I feel like doing a Maladon. <laughs> oh wait, it's not here. I feel sorry for you, man. I I call him, I told him I told him I, I actually said it to him. I said, I mean, whenever something happens, I'm gonna say I'm gonna do a maladon. He said, No. Yeah, I'm naming it after you, man. A daughter guy, man. I think in a strikeless system, yes. If you can use a a um Ball winning midfielder. So we kinda got we try oh we play in Barcelona. Can I stop now? <laughs> Alright, so we're gonna wait what what I know that they were using something different. Okay. Oh these are different tactics. Okay, I'm gonna try this now. A slightly different strike list, I think. Alright, with two shadow strikers, uh we'll go CM on attack. We go defensive wing on support. Defensive wing on support. Okay. These, these guys protect the flanks. And then we send these two guys as what? Invert the wing backs on defend? It's like really no ambition tactic. Okay. Let's see what happens to this. This is literally a no ambition tactic. I would say you an anchor man. <laughs> Ye of no ambition. Yeah or no ambition. What is this? No, shut up. Get out. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I hope we got no PIs as well. Okay. All right. Okay. All right, so what have we got? We got two defensive wingers. There's absolutely no, no, no ambition here. Inverter invest come in here. They control the pocket. They got defensive wingers. Um, they will actually go down the flanks and try and do something with the ball. Okay. Okay. What we're gonna try and do is I'm gonna just make him into a winger. We'll see what happens, right? As a result of that. Okay. All right, so we got winger, winger. We got this guy pushing through the middle. All right, now uh, we're gonna do with this setup. I've got these guys coming in. I want counter press. Much higher line of engagement. Okay, done. All right, quick pick, quick pick. Okay, we got you, 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 you. Okay, these guys are out and out wingers. Okay. Is as you can see, a striker like this is not a panache for uh, what do you call it? Uh, it's not a cheap coat. Okay, that same striker tactic I've used it before, and I've beaten lots of teams with it. But 
I had the players for it. So in that particular set, I were playing against Ajax and Ajax kicked my ass because I was doing the wrong thing against a 4 2 3 1. All right, now we, I don't know what we're playing against. We're going to find out. Oh, it's another 4 2 3 1. Okay, so we've got. Now I'm trying to use raw numbers to control the ball in midfield. Out of the gate, we got 62% possession. Right. So what I'm doing is using raw numbers. Okay, let's look at the. So you can see. From the start of the game, right? We're keeping the ball in midfield, which is what you're going to see happen with a setup like this. And you are, we are the ones uh, with the ball. So we got to make sure, this is one of the reasons why if you use counter press, that's why I use counter press with inverted wing backs. Because it makes a lot of sense. Because with inverted wing backs, they're already in that position. So you don't want to have them to, you don't want inverted wing backs to regroup. Right? So now you're looking at your roles and duties. You're looking at specific players. Um, okay. The other thing here is you could against the uh, probably against the AI you can do this. Remove the roam. No scenario remove. In fact, do you want to do? Stay wider. Alright, so we're gonna get these guys to stay wide and then ask them to do the, you know, come inside with the ball and then dink one over the top. The problem is, is um, I personally think that you're better off playing with defensive wingers. And then you win the ball and then your players are of the quality that have cuts inside with the ball. Uh, those kind of traits and then they bring those traits into play, right? They cut inside. Because you are playing defensive wingers. They are going to stay locked in. And then all you're doing is dropping balls over the top. So we got, we're getting 58. Well, it's like a lot of possession. We're li literally controlling this game now. So, again, goes back into position. Then goes that way. Oh, not too bad. Uh, Guardiola, 100% is in real life playing a strikeless system. I don't know why he gave the ball away when he was in a goal scoring position, right? So, yeah, which is the reason why when you play strikeless systems, you're looking at these two guys going, they better be natural finishers. Eight finishing 14 composure, no wonder. This guy? Finishing 12. So we got to take this guy off. He's, you know, he's not a, he's not a natural finisher, man. Tomari Gray, 10, 11. Okay, we might use you. Adam Unas. 12, 12, okay. You're left, okay. We'll just put you here. Since you want to leave the club, we'll give you a last hurrah. So far, 60% possession against a 4 2 3 1. So, your formation is actually a very big part of strikeless equations, right? So, some formations, like just now, doesn't do very well, right? I mean, we talked about it earlier when I talked about controlling um, the second ball. We couldn't control the second ball against I. We couldn't win back the second ball, right? So in that game. Got 58% possession. So what can we do? I mean, you could do this. And this is one time, yeah, it does make sense. But the problem is who's going to cross the ball for you? Those, when you do something like this, right? Your defensive wingers are going to go up the pitch. Am I playing defensive or no, inverted wingers, right? Yeah, that's this is the 50 50. Notice the goalkeeper kicked the ball very long. And because I'm playing inverted wingers, those inverted wingers are just a tad bit slower in getting back. If I use defensive wingers, they would have been back. So that guy, inverted winger, comes in, holds up the ball, shadow striker, inverted winger now cuts inside. You want that in an inverted winger. To, to, or if you're playing somebody on the right flank, he cuts inside from the right flank. Left flank, you want the guy cutting inside from the left flank. You can see all the movement patterns. The movement patterns are exactly what I wanted to see, right? All I need now is the right kind of player. See, we it's not a question of whether this tactic doesn't work. No, tactic is working. It's very clear to me it's working. I just don't have the right player for it. Okay. And the next part of the equation is this. Should I, okay, I can do this, pass into space. Um, we increase, uh, dribble less. It can't work. 
uh, much higher line of engagement that can work on BPD, GGG, everything's working nice and sweet. Um, I mean, this is very basic, right? You can even do something slightly different, give it a bit more width, but we don't want to do that at the moment. There's too many moving parts for me to pay attention to. There's a, yeah, in a sense, it would, if your inverted wing bags are, if your inverted wing bags are, if you expect your inverted wing bags to overlap, yes, then yes. But if you don't, like, I don't want my inverted wing bags to overlap, right? So I would just want them to sit in this pocket. Right, they only sit in that pocket, so they are fine. In fact, when they cut inside, if they run out of options, they got the inverted wing bags to give the ball to. Right, so. It's only when you have the overlap, underlap instruction, that's when you start going, oh, maybe an inverted wing back and an inverted wing back is not a good idea. Because then the inverted wing back will come up here and then he tries to overlap and the inverted wing is just sitting in front of him. Okay, now let's try and get a bit more adventurous. Okay, okay we're going to turn this guy into a ball with him if you don't support. Weary. We're going to turn this guy into a winger on a tank. And I'm going to have one inverted winger on a tank here. Okay, these guys are still tucked in. Right, we are, I'm slowly dialing it up right now, okay? Second half, we'll start like this. The first half, we are very cagey. Not trying very much. Not second half. Let's take a bit of risk. Now you see where the inverted wingers are sitting. Where my you see, I got my W shape in midfield, and I got a very wide setup in my tank with the, the players in the wide positions. This is uh this is gonna happen, right? So you're looking for players who you definitely need players who can play those kind of passes or or at least receive those kind of balls. Guardiola's Barcelona played strikeless tactic. 4 3 3. Yeah, they had uh, Messi as an F9. There are a lot of teams that have played strikeless in the past. Many, many teams have played strikeless. So, this is one other setup. Actually, I mean, they, let's just put it, let's just make sure that, you know, we get one thing straight, right? You need players with strikeless tactics, right? So sometimes you need players who have got strength. Um, you need the right formation. Rather, you know, you read the right players of strikeless tactic. You cannot be like me, be changing. I had a strikeless tactic set up for this team. What do you think of Mourinho's debut in Rome? Hmm. Well, should ask him. Ah, oh, man, we can see the goal, but that's second defeat, man. I mean, the principles are there. As you can see, it's not that easy. You got to, it's all about the players at the end of the day. Okay, we're going to change. I'm going to, I'm going to have, I'm not going to have two wing backs now. I'm going to turn this guy into wing back on support. Move up the channel here. This guy. Wingback is going to come up, support this winger. Shadow striker, shadow striker. Inverted winger is going to look this way. Inverted wingback is going to sit in this pocket. Okay. We're not going to do this. We're going to hit the early cross. Um, get stuck in, you start the marking. Okay. Second experiment not working very well, is it? Right, we need more practice with strikeless tactics. We got a penalty. Uh, no, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no penalty. Yeah, other people don't get, other people get 
don't don't get this uh no penalty situations i get these no penalty situations on my stream a lot okay Man, it's my second defeat. I don't believe this, man. We gotta craft what very soon for this team before I start I lose my temper. I forgot, you know, I mean I forgot what the strikeless tactic against uh, Glasgow was, man. I think this is okay. This is alright. Save, uh, was it final, right? This works. I just have to tweak it later. We lost, we lost one game, two games, that's fine. We just need to sort out. I, I used the wrong player as a wingback as well. Two defeats, man. See la vie. I did get a few no penalties. Seems to have 50 50 off the top of my head. Ah, 50 50. Man, I. I, I oh, we're playing our next against Barcelona. Such is our ambition, man. Okay, alright. What do I do against Barcelona? I'm going to play a slightly different strikeless tactic. I'm gonna play a 4 2 2 2 DM. That's like very, very safe, man. Okay, so we got this. Uh, we're gonna load one here, which is the current one that I have. Or is it Fire Note? Can I call it Fire Note? Where is it? You bloody useless piece of shit. No. No. Hmm. I think it was wing back. Winger on attack. I think I'm putting this wing wing back on defend. This guy uh inverter wing back on support. This guy no. You turn this guy into a wing back on support. Hmm. In water wing bell support. This guy is a winger on attack. This guy is a water wing back on Alright, so we'll save this as final. It's under shortlisting tactic, is it? GI tactics, okay. Final. One. Oh, this. All right, my AI tactics are here. Okay. Oh, these are the AI ones I created. Okay. All right. Now I'm gonna make a four two two DM. Let's hope that this works. Okay. Uh, we're gonna have one AMA. We're gonna have one Shadow Striker. Um, we're gonna have you AMA on attack. We're gonna have you hold up the ball. Um, hold up the ball. Shoot less often. And room room position. Okay. All right, we want you to play as an inverter winger on a tank. We want you to play as a winger on a tank. We want you to be an ink, uh, BM on support. I want you to be an anchor man. I want you to be a wing back on defense. I want you to be a wing back on defense. Okay, this is a very, very no ambitious one. Low on ambition, high on Strikeless tactic against that team called Barcelona. Okay. All right, we're playing Barcelona. Mina, uh, this guy, who's this guy? We got one guy called Groen, I think. He's a shadow striker. And Cruz is a winger, Cholinov, Diallo, Guerre, Magistri. Okay, fine. FT, I know you're not supposed to be my fullback. Okay. Uh, I think it's this guy. 
All right, there we go. Our goal is to play Barcelona next. Let's hope our strikeless tactic works against Barcelona. It's a simple 4 2 2 2 DM. The problem with this tactic is going to be is space. Maybe what I'll do is we make it. Okay. I'm going to do it like this. Central midfield on the thing. Against Barcelona, right? So we're going to we're gonna start like this. And I might switch into AMA later. What is Barcelona playing? I have no clue. Okay. All right. Okay. Final note is playing <coughs> this system. What a Barcelona playing. Ideally, Mina should have that position, should have been a strong player, jumping reach. They're playing a 4 2 3 1 before then. Okay. All right. Okay. Hopefully. All right. Okay. Now, this role should be ball winner. He's not a ball winner by nature. He got no ball winners. Okay, never mind. Let's hope this guy just you know, produces a headache for the, the, the player in the middle there. Okay. All right. Uh, we'll extend the highlights. If this was a ball winner, I'll be very happy because then these two cannot play. Then they have to go exclusively to the flanks. Okay, so. Whoa. We forced uh, Barcelona into an early action save. Okay. All right. So, oh, the final is all over Barcelona. Boom! No, that's not a goal. We're offside of a corner. So embarrassing. So it's final over Barcelona, man. We got Ansu Fati, Jaden Sancho, Felix, Jao Felix, Phil Foden, Placenta. I'm sorry, is that Placentini? Okay, Placentini. <laughs> Piacentini, not Placentini. <laughs> that's name is Placentini, man. I mean, not bad. I mean, we got off to a very good start um, with those two very excellent attempts. But as reality would have it, we are a team whose jumping reach is 13 at the back, right? You remember that? Our defenders can't win crosses, so we better be the first to score because we're not going to get many chances, man. So guys, we're not doing too badly, are we? Which is also a comprehensive island. We seem to be getting a lot of action in the opposition third. I created this for again, I I have a similar system against the AI. It's my 4231 versus the AI. 4231 strikeless. And it seems to work quite a lot. Because uh what this does. Is it if you have the players where it creates a situation against the AI where they are two central midfielders have a problem um, with the ball, right? They can't get to the ball, so you basically um, putting you're basically using the guys on the flanks then, right? So you're focusing play on the flanks and you're trying to get the ball to the guys on the flanks to run at them. Then you focus play and you keep the ball. Unfortunately, they also they are also pretty good at trying to win the ball back. I like the fact that they have really picked up yellow cards, man. Look at that. They've got a yellow card right here. Yeah. This is definitely the wrong player right for that position. We've got a we've got a what a, a mid attacking midfielder playing as a uh CM on attack. Ideally, what we wanted in this position was like a ball winner. Okay, plenty of goal mouth action, but so far Barcelona have only haven't really been able to register very much. But I'm pretty certain that they will eventually score. What can I do? Ooh, okay. All right. Now let's see what happens when I put this guy here. Okay. Remember our earlier one was. Now I'm gonna go AM on support. Extra man. Get him to close down a bit more. He's already doing that. Mark tighter. Yeah. Okay. We'll just keep it simple. Just AM on support. 
at least then it doesn't bomb forward, right? Okay, so we're creating like a 4-2-2 DM system now. Yeah, we've got Anchorman and DM. These two are very defensive roles. And then we've got these two attacking duties that are going to try and, you know, basically, we, we ideally just want these guys to get away and get the early cross. So these are the challenges that you will face when you make a strikeless tactic, right? So it's never going to be a panache for um, to beat big sides, right? It's not a magical system that goes out there and beats all the big sides. You still need players for it. Right? So now we got Chilinov is on a 6.3. So we obviously have an issue here. So what is this guy? This guy is an attacking midfielder right left. He can play there. Okay, good. We'll drop him here. This guy, a uh, chilling off. Uh, he's jumping. He's five. He's not very strong, but he's reasonably quick. Jorge, uh, he can't score to save his life. There's no point putting him there. This guy, at least he can pass the ball. He's got vision. He tries kill the ball. So maybe he can play here. All right. So this guy is actually kind of an interesting proposition for this position now. All right. So we've got one guy who's in the playing in the Now this guy, he might be able to find this player, and. What I said earlier about this being uh, this being a defensive system, strikeless tactics tend to be more defensive. So you can set up a strikeless tactic to 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 basically um, to make it hard for the opposition to score all goals. Yeah. And then they are basically counter attacking systems, right? So you're sitting back deep and you're trying to hit teams on a counter, which is the reason why when you when I play against Strikeless Systems, there's two, two ways to play it, right? Oh man, it's an own goal from Lamer. After all that defensive work, right? Gives up an own goal. That's, that's sad. That is so sad. Oh man, one mistake. He slide in. So, it's so realistic. When you play strikeless systems, you want to make sure that you have the players for it. Oh no, not again. Uh, they're all over me. Eventually, they broke through. So against strikeless systems, you know, either you... It's not a secret recipe. A good team is going to be able to be a strikeless system. If your team is like playing a 4 2 3 of course you can be a strikeless system. If you're better players, yeah, why not? It's 2 1 against Barcelona, not too bad. Okay, we managed to pull one back. It's not the end of the world for us, but it's. We made a. The, having this guy up on the pitch is making a difference, right? He's, he's, uh, he's, he has killer balls. We've got inverted winger coming inside. Um, we're going to have to remove, take this guy off. Uh, we'll put on King. We're replacing him with this player. The only thing he's got going for him is got a big he's got a big hit. Uh, Mina is on a yellow card, so... Um, okay, still... Okay to play him here. It's not that bad. Unless we want to play him. Oh, he's there's no difference between him and this guy. Okay. Games is bossing it. Other games is doing nothing, yeah. I guess it's much when you did. If some games is good, some games is not, right? I, know. I mean I'm not saying that I I I know that. People think strikeless systems are a match engine exploit. They're not really. I mean, if your team is not good, it's not good. You know? No amount of strikeless is going to make you win attack, win the system. See, if, if, if I was able to beat Barcelona with my strikeless system, right? Because Barcelona can't defend a strike against a strikeless system. Then if Barcelona can't play against a strikeless system, then it becomes an issue. So, we did okay. Lima made a mistake on goal. So we suffer on this flank. We came close, but, you know, 
we came close to holding them to a draw but then we fell we fell uh we fell behind okay we, there is time on the clock okay let's see what happens Diallo Cruz what a ball for him man Ostali oh it's a penalty ladies and gentlemen children of all ages Alastoya has gone diving in the box He's gone diving in the box and he's won us a penalty against Barcelona. And Diallo steps up for the moment of his life as Feyenoord come back from two goals down using a hither two. And for the ladies and gentlemen, we created a 4 for 2 strikers for the first time. I haven't. I wanted to make this during a... I wanted to make a 4 for 2 strikers during a... During a, at the FM uh, last night Summer Cup. I thought I did one. It didn't it didn't come up i'm actually saving this right so this is a four four two zero 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 you notice right i have all these are against the ai there are certain striker systems i play against the AI and there's certain i will not play against uh humans and this is one of them all right so we got fire node a new striker system diallo fired up from nowhere have pulled a Houdini on Barcelona Barcelona furious have gone to a 4-2-4 now if Barcelona had played a 4-2-4 earlier I might have won this game okay. look at our XG man this is a good thing about this guy look at that look at this guys look at this This is fine or this is Barcelona of course, right? So this is Barcelona easy chance. Yeah. And then wait. Two two. Wait. Which one am I? I'm I can't be this, right? I scored a last minute goal. This is a penalty. This is me. Holy shit, this is my XG. Because this is a penalty and this is our chance. Holy cow. Oh man. I mean, look, look, we have to see the short map. Okay. Um, I mean, I'm a okay, short map. It's going to be here, man. We don't have many, right? What's this? XG, yeah, man. 53. Holy shit. This is huge. This is like, you got, you, if you miss this, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. So this is Barcelona's heat map. This is our heat map. Naturally, you know, the players are in the right position. I just have to... If it were me, I improve it slightly. This role should be on cover. Yeah, this role should be on cover. If I change it on cover, I get a better shape. It's too easy for them to find one over the top. Okay, alright. Okay, so you see this role? This role was a problem for us. Yeah, the, the player didn't play well. So we're going to tweak that. I mean, this is for the AI. Okay. All right. So in the Champions League, meanwhile, in the Champions League, uh, this is my final save, right? My journeyman save. Um, where is the Champions League? I mean, uh, like competitions. Uh, I'm such an idiot. Okay. All right. Here we go. Milan, Barcelona, final. Guys, the Champions League edition is still alive. Why not have managed to hold Barcelona to a draw? Oh my goodness. So we play. Final travel to Besiktas and then final travel to Milan. We have done the deed, no? On Barcelona. I think Barcelona have not beaten us. Milan, Barcelona. Final beat Besiktas. Final beat. Uh, we lost to Milan. Then we drew to Barcelona away, and then we drew to Barcelona at home. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, final did not lose to Barcelona. I told you, right? Yeah, yeah, because last night, last year, the offside rules were a joke. I, I honestly thought the offside rules have been a joke. Um, it's so easy.
uh what do you call it this um this what what do you mean um barcelona i mean what am i saying the offside rule right it's such a stupid offside rule just uh you can actually the old offside rule you can actually you can actually damage a player i mean you can actually end a player's career you could easily end a player's career last time it was very easy to do that without uh too much uh you know you go in you, you tackle you slide in hard on a player and you take him out of the game that's it that was last year okay we got ribeiro candelera will play here because this guy is obviously oh yeah this is what we wanted to do we're going to turn this into a central defender on cover okay they got wing back on defense i think i uh, did i okay we're gonna have a wing back on defense we don't need this guy to pop up the pop up the pitch do i right we're gonna hold this hold this we got another wing back on defense i mean you can obviously do wing back on support nobody says so i mean you can you can go wing back on support or whatever but because i want to maintain structure because i want the counters right i want to hit teams on the break Nesto Green will come here. Right. Okay. Do I mean uh I want to soak and punch, soak and punch, soak and punch. I mean we're not talking about creating a work notice I'm not working the ball into the box. So I'm making a very basic striker system. Offside has been yeah, this year this season offside is much better, much more improved. Last year offside, offside was terrible. Yeah. I'm, why they, nobody's gonna like nobody's gonna like offside this year the coaches might not like offside this year i mean come on last year the offside was one armpit you know he's, he's onside by an armpit i'm like what the hell offside by his nose it's like it's like me running doing track and field okay there was one time i because i'm a sikh right so i used when i was younger i used to wear a turban Okay. I'm not joking. Where's that turban? So, so one, and I don't need to wear a turban when I'm running a foot race. You know, some we don't wear turbans during a foot race. Just wear a piece of cloth. But I was in this race, and I decided, okay, I'm, I'm gonna get into a foot race with this guy because he's taller than me, and I was expecting a very big fight in our middle distance race. So I wore a turban, and I made it a bit sharper and longer I was 16 years old so I told her so my friends asked me so why why uh, why is you why are you wearing a turban they said for once in my life I want to be able to say I won by a turban <laughs> and then when I crossed the line you know if it's a fourth I'm like a kid right I'm 16 years old you got all these kind of funny funny ideas in your head I mean, in our national competitions, there was no, I mean, there's no such thing as photo finish, right? In schools, where they, who employs photo finishing technology in in uh, school uh, national school competitions? But like, yeah, yeah, I wanna win this by a uh, turban. After all that, after all that, uh, after all that melodrama, I actually won by quite a lot more than a turban. Never got a chance to, so I had to, I had to do it, to, I had to do it for myself as I crossed the line. I went like. This like I told my friend to take a picture. Ah, uh, that was so hilarious. I laughed and laughed and laughed for so many weeks after that. Okay, let's go. This is about basic. This is against the AI again, okay? There's so many. I'm not saying that, you know, you probably have a very good strike list system, Kuso. You should share with us what, how you make your strike list system. Because along the way, we all get better. I mean, I don't... I don't believe that you need to have OIs. You need to OI like crazy or you need to, you know. Uh, okay, this is going to be interesting. You see, a strikeless system is not a panache for success, right? I'm playing this formation. You think a strikeless system like this is going to work? This striker system is going to struggle against this system because we are defensive, we're waiting for the counter attack. These guys are going, yeah, we're waiting for you to we're waiting for you to attack. The two sides going with each other, going. We both want you to attack. So we're gonna work ball to box. And this is one time where I'm gonna push the anti. Underlap, underlap. High up the pitch. 
check. We're going to move up the pitch as a unit. Okay. Most likely, I'm going to go change this to wing back now. Get up the pitch. We've got two. This guy is going to go down the byline. This guy is going to... He's going to dink. He's going to dink, but I want him to go down. If he's going to cross, I want him to go down the byline. Cross center. Cross center. Right, let's see. Let's see, right? Because this is very defensive. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have the ball like all day long, man. Like this, seven minutes, no shots from these guys. I can afford to be more adventurous in my striker system because these three, four are not moving. This is like the anti strikeless setup. It's anti strikeless It doesn't like it doesn't like to play against strikeless systems. So this is like, oh, I'm not playing against you. You want me to you want to control midfield. So I'm not gonna let you control midfield because I'm gonna just shove four guys in your face and three defenders. Now you try and beat my system with your strikeless system. You see that? They haven't come out to attack. But we haven't created very many chances, have we? 0 0.21. Highlights are we have one like 0 0.2. 0.21 how many chances man we've only had one the sh shot was blocked yeah i'm gonna turn this guy now into a shadow striker on attack but inverter winger um okay full back full back counter counter press literally push all the way up now i'm just taking chances Let's go extend the highlights, man. We might see something. Borneo FC? Uh, I got Kuching FC. But they, the clubs have changed, right? They have new clubs now in where I am. Where my wife lives. Sarawak. Uh, in Sarawak. It's uh, got one Kuching FC. There are two Kuching. There are two. I swear to God, I don't know how they can fit two football clubs in a small little city like this. Okay. Uh, Okay, it's not enough bite. I'm gonna go very attacking. I want the ball in in uh, counter attacking tactics like attacking or very attacking. You want the ball to move up the pitch very fast, right? You don't want it to like you know de -doll. You don't it balance is something you never do. So now we're moving up the pitch. So we now we're creating more and more chances. We 66 possession, 66 percent possession against a tactic that doesn't want to come out. So I have to push the anti. This is as high as I can go without, you know, opening myself up. So now I got winger. I got inverted winger going to say. Okay, now I'm going to... I'm going to double up on everything. So I'm going to send this guy in as an inverted winger. So he's going to come in. He's going to come in. These guys are going to go down the flanks. Take all kinds of chances. We got this block. We can't defend against one guy. Wow. One guy, we can't defend against him. See it, man. We have to put four guys to defend against that one. So might as well just don't throw in more attacks. I don't know. Yeah, AI be cheating again, correct? Yeah, always cheats. Trust me, man. Since when can we have a Mazala in the center, right? As I was probably gonna say it's a UI bug. Then I say I'm sick and tired of UI bugs, right? It's a cheat. Just say so. You give the AI something that he can do that we can't do. Probably what is what is happening is this a supposed to be AP and the other one supposed to be the Mazala. And this is the default UI, okay? <laughs> it's not like I made a new UI skin, no. This is the default UI. FT brings the ball forward, looks for options. Ah uh, yeah. Okay, grey. Hefty again. See the thing is right, we're playing on a very attacking mentality, right? So you see what the first thing that my wing back does is sends the ball forward. Okay. Alright, so what I'll do now. Is I come to this guy, come to him. Um, I can't do this, but I can come in here. Should I? Should I? Should I? Should I? Should I? No, I'll just I'll just drop him to attacking. Because that team is very defensive. It's not that I this make that makes sense if let's say they are they are attacking me, right? A very attacking mentality. This wing back is always out of position. So the ball goes and lands in space. Now the ball is just going and somebody's there to pick it up. 
I already push, push, push. I'm already pushing everybody out. Uh, I mean, of course, um, the other option is to go for for two strikers. I think move the two mids up, but I don't want to do that. We should be able to create some chances against them. I'm gonna continue. Anchorman DM, that's fine. Okay, maybe now we get him involved as well. Okay, so we get this guy involved. We turn him into a Segundo Volante on support. So now he gets up the pitch. He gets involved. The number of players are going up the pitch now. So inverter winger, inverter winger. Shadow striker. It's like we're sending everybody right into this parcel of land. Okay. And then we've got these guys doing the overlap. Or rather they underlap. Looking for runs inside. The runs inside are coming from yeah, inverter wingers with two shadow strikers. And in a congested area, which logically I should be doing something different. Shouldn't be so stubborn. Wing on a tank. Wing on a tank. Complete wing back. And complete wing back on it. Okay, that's much better. Okay, winger gives me with complete wing backs and come inside. Hmm. How do you beat a tree at the back system? How do you beat a tree in the back system? Give uh use I'm which is what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to use with. Alright, okay, shit. I'm not using with. Use with and I, I see use with and I'm not even using with. Sound like such a bloody idiot. So now I've got using with and then I'm using uh, I'm using these guys to go to the flanks and then I'm using these guys to push inside. But we're trying our best, you know. No, oh, I mean ideally a striker system like this, I'll probably play a 4 2 3 1 and I'll push more players into attack. I mean this is the anti strikers Basically, we just encountered the anti strikers It's like the anti... Hey, Mazala AP, I think as I heard you. Okay. What did we do? Did? did we do all the tricks? Yeah, we did everything. Alright. They barely came out of the third, but we didn't exactly do very well. That's a Christmas pudding system. Yeah, it is a Christmas pudding. It's a very annoying system to play with. Because it's got one striker up top. It's the ultimate, right? No, it's... There are, like... There's a holy grail among players in the draft to come up with the anti striker system. Everybody thinks he's got one when he wins one game. And then... It doesn't. He loses the next game. Yeah. So... So you, you gotta yeah, I just wondering about if yeah you face a system like you gotta be very careful because they long ball it to their speedy striker, the speedy striker breaks away, right? So I was very patient in trying to break them down. So I did all the like I increased the level as slowly as I went. Um you notice, right? I didn't do everything in one go. This is how I handle the risk in this game. We lost to IX and now we've uh, drawn, right? so that's not too bad. We don't want to go on a losing streak, man. I mean, this is part of my, this is part of my uh, journeyman save. So naturally, it's the, it'll be included in the playlist with the rest of the, uh, um, the rest of the journeyman saves that I have going. Yes, I do sound, sound a bit tired because I was up for seven hours streaming non-stop yesterday. And um, 
immediately after the stream, I didn't sleep because I had to look after the kids the whole day. I had to look after the kids the whole day. So I was up with the boys the whole way through. So I'm doing this as a precursor to the Shadow Striker system. Because the thing is, sorry, the strikeless system, but the thing is about these strikeless systems, you got to understand that there are AI strikeless systems and the human strikeless systems, right? Okay. And then the other thing you have to understand is um, when you play strikeless systems, you got to worry about like how you're going to, how you're going to, you got to worry about different formations as well. So I'm trying to make one that's slightly more like universal. <laughs> I can use it against all teams. If the winner will come here, winner will come here, ball winner will win here. Okay, this guy is always going to be AMA. Okay, so now he works in tandem with this guy. This guy is going to come in here. This guy is going to be a fullback on support. All right, he will come up the pitch. Okay, it's an asymmetric, <laughs> kind of asymmetric system. Okay, this should work. Then I can definitely use counter press here. Okay, let's go, man. El Nani is a ball winner. We have big dreams, man. Such big dreams I have. Oh my god, you want El Nani as a ball winner? Oh yes. The opening. Defender center left. Okay, yeah. Dive into tackle. So don't 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 dive all the time. Okay, let's go. Um Maharashi. Try you out. The name is so cool, right? We just gotta have to we just gotta have to try him. So we don't know what this team is using. I mean, this is a philosophy right now, man. We don't know what what tactic they're using. Okay, whatever. You wanna be a analyst with our club? Yes, join the club. We can play Bashikta's names, but I'm probably gonna end it here, man. Okay, this is the last version of Strike the System. Okay, so this one is gonna be slightly more universal. Inverter is gonna come here, winger is gonna go this way. Right. What I want from this guy is actually to stay wider. Okay. I want you to stay wider. And because we've got an anchor man here, this player could be a complete wing by our support. So he comes through the middle. Right. He's potentially he might come through the middle. Alright. Uh the AMA. This is a bit more flamboyant in the sense that we've got the inverted winger coming this way. We've got maybe hmm, We're gonna get even more funky, man. This guy's gonna push out a bit more, right? He's gonna be a bit more wider because we've got anchor man here, so we're gonna ask him to stay a bit wider. And yeah, this is a bit more adventurous. It's like we're getting more and more complicated with us. So eventually, you'll you, when you start getting more comfortable, you got basic strike list systems, then you got a bit more funky with the strike list system because you kind of know what you want in you know small little bits. Yeah, not too bad. Look at that. Oh, yeah, he goes. There he goes. He's been drawn out. Oh, man, come on. What formation are we playing against? We're playing against a 4 2 3 oh, This will be interesting. See, this guy should be a support now. But we've got this guy coming up. We've got this guy. We were flooding the center. These two guys might be starved of ball. Might be starved of ball. This ball winner is going to be creating havoc for this player. He should be. Yeah, his numbers are dropping. 6.7, 6.6. .6. 6.7 okay what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here go to our boys they're doing all this short passing play out of defense early cross maybe not okay we're just gonna leave it uh we're just gonna move up the thing i'm gonna avoid the middle go focus play focus play okay just make a bit of tweaks to the system Oh yeah, hooray! We already got one yellow card. We got one yellow card for ourselves. We got one yellow card for them. Yeah, it's like a win, man. Now, B W M O. No, it's a deep line playmaker. Oh, interesting. Okay. Okay. Uh, take fewer risks. Shoot less often. No, no, no. Dribble less. Okay. Just concentrate on. Creating some trouble here. Okay, we got DLP, right? So he's on the left. So we want this guy to give him some issues. Okay, we got wing on the tank. We're defending a bloody corner now. Okay, come on, guys. Okay, let's see. 
ball out to this guy he's got passing options he's got passing options he's gonna come inside yep ball playing defender gives it to that guy okay good nice okay goes wide all right see the inside okay thank you oh diallo you please hold uh, breath <laughs> damn it you come out i don't care you shut up you could put hell nanny there man slower player damn it that was the wrong decision go oh! uh almost there i can sense it it's it's coming together right now over me okay all right am shadow striker should be the other side yes it should be the other side okay it should be the other way um shadow striker should be here am should be here why there's a the potential of this guy dropping deep is quite good and someone is gonna blue killer balls and there's a winger on this side right so this guy's cutting inside so he cuts inside is looking to give the ball give the ball to someone who's attacking and it's gonna be not an ama it's gonna be a shadow striker so we actually got the two mixed up okay so we want to put shadow striker here we're gonna put attacking midfielder here i'm gonna swap the two guys okay I mean, you can't put two Shadow Strikers. There's nothing wrong. I just want to create a bit of diversity in the movement of the two roles. Well, now they've now the playmaker is having problems. <laughs> they got problems on this side already. Okay, that's very nice. Focus play where? Right or left? Right. Okay, let's go, babies. Oh, yeah. Sweet thing. Under pressure. Yep, that's what we want to see. Bloody hell. I see under pressure and you give them a bloody free kick. Oh, he'll still make the save. I'm liking this. I'm liking how this uh, striker system is looking. Okay, we've got plenty of movement. All right, now the question is, uh, can we score goal or do we find better players? Yeah, the pressure is coming. Looking for another one. Okay. Uh, they're working the ball. That's fine. Oh, no. What a stop, man. FT, you useless. You're not supposed to be playing here. You're supposed to be Conrad Lamer. The guy who gave away the... Wait a minute. Stop. Pause for a course. Why are you on the bench? With Sharon, tries killer balls. Rowan. Okay, you're the shadow striker. What gray? Right, shoots from distance, not boss fast opponent. Okay. Crossing eleven. Uh okay, let's find a player who can cross the ball. 13, 15, 16. Okay, you okay. Right, right. No, what options do we have in our team? Okay. Um you want me now? 12, no. Not good enough. Chilling off. Right, 15. You can't cross with 11, but you run most of the ball. Pretty fast, gets away. And at least you can pass the ball. You've got no anticipation and no bravery. You're just a waste of space. Okay. All right, we'll put you there instead. Yeah. You got, you got to think about the players you're using. So we made a mistake, right? So we've got a mistake here. We might potentially have an issue here because the reason is because this we're using an anchor man right so he's not really going to support this inverter winger the inverter winger is largely on his own so he needs he needs support so the question is um how do we give him the support without compromising the tactic okay so i'm taking a chance now by putting this guy on an overlap So I got overlap, which means that okay, a bit hairy, scary man. Overlaps. Okay, we got overlap coming this way. So if I go, to, I do an overlap. Take few risks.
Well, suddenly the highlight is ours. Okay, now he's got support. Look at the inverted winger. Now he's a happy beaver. <laughs> it's like he suddenly got away. Hey, I've got friends. Thank you very much. Now I can get up and attack. It is against the AI. Yeah, my thinking is not AI thinking. My thinking is human player. With a human player, I probably wouldn't do that. With the AI, yeah, definitely. Any day, Sunday, I'll do that. <laughs> That's why the slight, there is a difference when you... I mean, I, I used to say, no, you should be able to. Some formations, yeah, I agree that um, that doesn't matter if you play the human or the AI. But strikeless tactics, yeah, it matters. Because you need to understand what your own strikeless system does. Against the AI, usually you don't find the AI playing, you know, playing, doing crazy stuff. Morcillo is now on a 6.3. Gotta recover. He's back to 6.7. Oh, he may he almost got to the ball. Bang. Aye. This guy is um, on an... He didn't win the second ball. Okay, now we got looking for our Conrad Lima, Ethan Laid. Got Laid. Put him here. Chelinov is doing a good job. Okay, so I'll leave him on the pitch. So we continue on our quest to make a strike the system for fine odd. It's gonna take me a few matches before I nail it. Because it depends on the players that I have, right? What can I do with the players that I have? I think I did it with one of our matches and then so I forgot what it is. I forgot the formation completely. It was a 4-3-3, three, three, I remember. 4-1-3-3. I got no luck, man, today. Today I got no luck. I lost the game again. Offer set piece. Join us at SI Games at Korea as well. They're offering us a job now. Oh, uh, this is shit. I gotta, I gotta improve this. This is not very good. I mean, there are problems with this setup because Anchorman is the AI again. It's not the human player. So this can be a bit more... I guess a bit more aggressive is the word for it. As, as a role. Uh, so we lost this game. Okay, hold on. All right. Okay. Keep changing. I keep coming up with new bloody tactics for this team. Okay. Load. I think it was four two three one. Strikeless. This. Inverted winger, complete wing back, full back, half back, okay, let's go. I'm just gonna make this. This is another strikeless tactic that I have, right? I'm playing Bashitas next. It's a 4 2 3 1 strikeless, zero. I know that I made one for this team, which is a 4 1 3 3 that works, and a 4 2 3 1 based on the players that they have. No, you not you. Put you here. Put you here. Okay, let's go. This is it, man. We have to win this game, you know, if we are going to go through to the next round of the Champions League. If we lose to Besiktas, that's it. Barcelona might go through, right? So we have to beat Besiktas and we have to hope to beat uh, Milan in the last game. Atira has beaten us. We have to... Barcelona play Milan. So if Barcelona beat Milan, then... Uh, oh, you know, we might be out. But if Milan beat Barcelona, then this, this could be a pivotal match. 
And I come into this game, hell-bent on making a strikeless system for this team, and I haven't got one figured out yet. Okay, here we go, boys. Again, it's a 4 2 3 1. They've got the ball. Most of the possession is in their half. I don't mind that. You see this? Action zones, right? The Now I have more of the ball. Earlier, they, they had more of the ball, and I was hitting them on the break. But it's okay, I'm, I'm gonna just keep on going. Yeah. This is a really defensive 4 2 3 1 strike list system. guy off and put in put in somebody who's got finishing as a person that can play in this position he's not playing well uh okay Mosilo cannot play there he is though So sad, man. Do we have a player who's got finishing? Oh, this guy doesn't have finishing, so we might as well just leave, leave whoever it is there. Da Silva. Da Silva's not that bad, so we'll get Da Silva up. Okay, now we're going to take this guy in from a roaming. We're going to turn him to a central midfield on the tank. Get him. Get this guy to push up. We got a halfback, we got a volante. Uh we might we might do work ball into box. If I don't already have that. I have that already. So yeah. This is this is as high as I can go, man. There's nothing else I can do now. Except sub players of Cruz. Where is Cruz? Mosilo is now tired. Um Mosilo for Yeah man, my bench isn't that good either. I don't have options off the bench as well. So yeah, we have to make do with what we have. Not playing badly. Um, not beating Besiktas. Say la vie. You know, just take who. Whoever is being recommended. No?
They played well, but we didn't get through. Okay, that's the team. That's the the team I used to manage. Six eight. Yeah, it's true enough, man. Barcelona did get the result they needed. To. Milan beat Barcelona, so the last game is gonna be. I I don't think we'll qualify for the Champions League. No, it's okay. But let's see now. Roaming playmaker, winger, inverted winger. I, there's too many attacking duties here. I need somebody to 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 hold onto the ball or win the ball in this area. So we're gonna have um, probably an advanced was playmaker in the center. Okay, and then we have a shadow striker here. All right, we're playing Den Haag next. I mean, I'm tweaking and tweaking and tweaking and coming up with a system. We haven't been su very successful. We have one. I mean, I had a system here. Now I forgot what to say. We had a system here that was strikeless for a while. I was doing okay. And I completely forgot what the strikeless system was. I, I can't even remember if I loaded it in properly. Hmm. Okay, we'll go this. 3 for 3 strike list. Okay. Alright, DLP, ball winner, complete wing back, shadow striker. Yeah, this can work. Because uh, we got one hold up, man. We got two coming in from this side. We got protection, the flanks. We got three in the middle. 3 for 3 strike list. We'll keep on defense. Flexible, that's fine. Okay. <laughs> we'll use one of my other strike list tactics. This guy is. Uh, He's holding his position, right? So we've got this guy who's going to try and win the ball in the final third in the opposition's area. Then we've got this complete wing back who's going to give us this against the AI. It can work. Then we've got ball playing defenders on stopper duty. And then we've got, um, we've got like, um, this role can actually hold up the ball in certain cases. Or you can actually have it set up in such a way that uh, you got AMA here. AMA here, and then this guy is the Shadow Striker. Alright, so... What this creates is uh, two AMAs and one player just going through the middle trying to score goals, right? So who's our top scorer? Uh, I think it was De Groen. I think, well, let's look and see. I mean, that we, we haven't scored a lot of goals, right? Nesto, eight goals. Not like he's the hero of the day, but, you know the best that we have okay uh we got the we got da silva we got vasharian where is our friend Owen? okay we're gonna put idd one amc striker all right like somebody like this guy who can play both positions i'll put him here instead okay we'll put chilling off um you want a player that's usually not just a pure striker you want a player that's got like can play the position and if he's a striker to boot, then you've got it. So he can he can go through the middle. So this is like a system that I would be using. A 3-4-3 strikeless. I think it was a 4-3-3 strikeless or a 3-4-3 strikeless that I created for this thing. Right now I'm just des desperately trying to remember. Such a while ago. Yeah, there we go. All right, so we're working and working our way towards creating a system, right? So, yeah, now let's not forget, right? These two roles are damn important. So we need ball winners. We don't need jokers. So we're going to put one guy here. He can win the ball. He's a ball winner. Again, we got El Neni. He can be a deep line playmaker. Now, uh, he's just holding his position. He's slow. We're going to put Candelaria here. He's another fullback. Then we've got this position now. Uh, he's going to be a fullback. We can put him here. Yeah. All right, we've got two fullbacks. We've got another one in Conrad Lima, who can also play somewhere here. That's not too bad. Um, when Drongolan jumping, she's 13. This guy's got, at least he's got first touch, right? Uh, 12. 
His anticipation is terrible. Bravery is terrible. Composure is terrible. This this guy is just check, you know, just bad at being a central defender. But uh, we want this guy to have some anticipation. Yes. Okay. Ay 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 ay. What do I have to work with, man? Yeah, this is a uh, thirteen. Okay, I'll just accept whatever we see. Ah. <laughs> uh, Alright. This should be fine. And it should be fine. But this is uh, when I use when you use a DLP ball winning combination, you're trying to win the ball in the opponent's third. You can tweak it to make it to a oh DLP um DLP on defense duty. It's like the AI is not becoming savvy, man. It's playing a 4 3 3 against me. Shit. Let's see. Well, it might be, we might be fine. Almost got the opening goal. All right. The DLP went up to support the left as we tried to get ourselves into a, uh, to cross the ball, right? So. And comes back to win the ball. And we almost get ourselves into another position to score a goal. My, my preferred, like one of my preferred striker systems is a 3-4-3. Three, three. This is the difference. Uh, you, got, you, got, you have an AM shadow striker, AM combination up top. But you can have a shadow striker, shadow striker, AM combination. I mean, there's, there's a there's a specific reason for me using a double AMs and a shadow striker. And so there's a specific reason for me to use a AM with two shadow strikers. Gonna have the, the opposite 433 DM system is gonna have issues building up play against this system because they are DM is never gonna get to the ball. They can't play our defense. If they play our defense, they're in trouble. They might lose the ball. So this player is gonna struggle for 90 minutes of the game. Oh, we're on Kiara, so it's okay. So this is this is one way to set it up, right? So you've got we've we cover a lot of different kinds of strikeless systems, right? So each one has their own pe peculiar challenges. The easiest is the four, one, two central midfielders and three central, but then you are vulnerable on the flanks. This, you're less vulnerable on the flanks, but you're vulnerable in the center. So like the four, two, three, one might, might pose a risk for this system. But if you can keep the ball, if you pay attention to the transitions, you should be fine. Oh, they score a goal, man. Today is not our day, man. What have I got? I've got counter press on the idiot. But I think regroup or counter press. I should have had regroup on for this tactic, not counter press. Uh, after all the effort, their first, I think one of their first few shots on goal, they scored a goal. Okay, I'm not unhappy. I think we still the formation is producing the results. I just made a mistake. Yeah, now it's much better. It's a lot more stable. It's a lot more stable. Just now we lost the ball because of a transition. Yeah. Yeah, I got 
gonna take off this joker. Um, run Johan Mina. Bashan is not bad, but some games, right? You just like M goes MIA. Do we put right footer AMC at the right side or the opposite? Uh oh shit. Right footer AMC. I mean, it shouldn't matter in this setup. You can put right on right and left on left. Yeah, doesn't really matter. And then. You want, you see, we want it to be faster, right? This boat boy into box nonsense is not helping me out. So, you can actually go wider, double less, or well, I can get them to, you know, lose the ball. I mean, lose a player now. Right, defense. You have one goal down, but okay, you know. You got FM, that's about it. Because I didn't pay attention to regroup. I'm just gonna dial up everything right out to where you're attacking now and then berate my team. 6.97. That's the guys in front are playing well. Yeah. But somewhere along the way, we just made one stupid mistake and we considered a goal. Uh, this is the steam, right? So we'll go inside here. Fire not. Fix our wing back on the left flank, we should be fine. We had this this guy as a problem the last game, right? So I can play a right footed player. He's just gonna run right past uh he's just gonna work closer with the I mean if you play a right footed left back, what's gonna happen is he's gonna come this way sometimes. Um Sanders Jones, oh my goodness. When he got this Majarashi Adam Unas left footed can't tackle to save his life. Oh boy, gotta play this guy. But we haven't got much of a choice. But Sharon played like a joke. Okay, so we're gonna take him out. Okay, Gwery. Gwery can be. Okay, I'm mm, tempted to play Gwery. Um, 13 14. Let's see now. What do we have? Um, Xana Joe's can't play. Strongolin, yeah, maybe him. Okay. I need to play with decision making. Okay, alright. Candelera plays here. El Nani, Diallo, Vasharan is basically a waste of space the last game. This guy's a left, okay, so I put Johan Mina here and put you on this, okay. Done.
uh, it's there's nothing you can do man it's sometimes your your system might not be able to handle the skin um it's just a 10 a me thing okay a work within budget okay fine uh shadow striker there could be other improve yeah we need a few players man maybe worth looking for is there's interesting from some okay fine let's get started yeah Okay, end meeting. Done. Thank you very much for coming to the meeting. I don't believe in recruitment meetings. Thank recruitment meetings are a bloody waste of time. And they, they, they never come with suggestions that I can use. Uh, I've never had a single recruitment meeting that made sense for me. I'm not a big fan of recruitment meetings. Yeah, hello. Plus, they always say the same stuff over and over again. Uh, BM, the Oh my god. Left with the. Oh, Nanny is right footed. Yeah, I gotta put El the ball winner on this side, El Nini on that side. It's no choice. Okay. It's gonna affect my the balance of my tactics somewhat. Okay. Alright, so ball winner, well, I guess not that much. Okay, I got Diallo. Um and El Nini. Okay, they got Lima chilling off. Yeah. Okay, let's go. Uh we'll start off on positive and um see what happens. Yeah, I don't think you can speed it up because your skin is a uh, it's your skin, son. Yeah, you gotta be careful with your skin. So sometimes you got all the okay, all the other things you have on the game, right? You got graphics loaded, you got faces loaded, and you got a skin loaded. Right? That's that's gonna slow down your game. Then you have to play with lower leagues, less leagues, less players. So you gotta make a decision. What do you want? Right, you want the skin or you want? the leagues and the graphics packages and everything else yeah we've tweaked our system already so you gotta basically with striker systems right you gotta like identify which are your weak links and you gotta slowly you know put it to you know put the pieces together it's not gonna be an instant fix and it's not always gonna be um there's no such thing as a perfect tactic it's going to be the perfect players for your tactic. The, the positions matter, right? The players matter. So in the last one, we had this, we had a Major Rashi playing here. Now his decision making was horrible. Like, you know, he doesn't make the right. But complete wing back is uh, like, you know, Andy Robertson kind of player, right? Uh, Kyle Walker kind of player. Now these players, they need to be, they need to know where to go, right? Like, you need to know what to do. A bit of a bummer set piece uh, my set pieces aren't properly set up that guy should not have been allowed to get free i'll fix that later i'm just looking at the movements of the trial oh basically looking at the movements what they're playing this and i'm playing this okay this will be fun wait, wait hold on a minute three okay we're gonna change this configuration i'm gonna go Shadow Striker. Shadow Striker. <laughs> Shadow Striker. AMA. Oh, maybe APA. Okay, APA no. Okay. You I'm gonna ask you to do the roam, baby. Okay. Alright, so passing vision decisions flare to okay, that's not too bad. You come here. Since you already got come deep to get the ball. Runs with balls through center. That's fine. You. Place one, two, slice the switch ball to white area. Not like it's going to make much of a difference. You're already in a white area. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, it was working fine. And since the way it's been slow. Oh. But it's only been recent. Wow. Um, That... If you've been playing the same save for a really long time, it's, your file could have become bigger. So, um, there is an option in the game to set. Yeah, but I think your file, your save, you could have save have, is this a save that's over many, many seasons? Then that could be the reason why.
Okay, nice. Run, pull those guys out. Yeah. Oh, or create trouble. That's fine as well. The reason why I'm using, I went and swap to AM and an AP or a Rome situation is I want to create a lot more movement for these two guys to worry about. But I got three defenders, right? So. Just to worry about my three defenders as well. Shit. Oh, this is getting a bit, bit scary. Okay, so now these two guys are not doing too badly. Don't worry about this guy now. This guy is running into like... Running into trouble. I don't have many wingbacks, right? I think like one or two, right? Around wingbacks, I'm in trouble, man. I'm trying desperately to play a strikeless system when I don't have the players for it. Because I made this solemn oath that I'm going to go strikeless regardless. Nice! Aye, hits the post. That's the kind of movement that we want, right? So, and the the the, the runs between the lines. Okay. So far, so good. Now I'm going to just drop, take a chance, just drop it to a high line engagement. We got this guy now I have to worry about. Um, I don't have a right. I got this guy, Ethan Lee. Okay, I'm just going to use you. Oh, yeah. here. Okay, let's go. And then Diallo is running into problems. Got Ribeiro. Okay, you come here now. Right. Made out two substitutions. Da Silva. <laughs> I got a bunch of pansies. <laughs> two or three of the players went. Really? He's taking players off? Okay. I, 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 I've got a muscle pull here. I've got a muscle pull here. What about 3 4 2 strike? One strike. Yeah, you can make a 3 4 2 1 with two central midfielders. Yes, you could make one as well. But if 3 4 2 1 strikers, uh, you probably do quite well as well with 3 4 2 1 strikers. I haven't made all the permutations yet. I'm making, I'm now only starting to make a lot more strikers tactics. So I've got this this one. If you get the right place, it's going to be nice because there's a lot of dinking balls over the top, right? It's either this role can be an AM, right? You can even change this. I mean, maybe AP is not such a good idea. Because then it just stops right there. So what you want is something like this. Maybe Trequatista. Now Trequatista could work. He goes in, he gets into the box or he drops off. Alright. The reason why is if you want to create some problems for this defender, obviously he's not having a good time. It's like our defender is having a 6.5. Their defender is having the time of his life. So obviously we're not doing the right thing by this player. But so far, okay, we managed to, you know, we're not doing that badly. We just have to improve the way we're playing, that's all. There we go. Okay, that's nice. Okay, bang. One. Still time on the clock for us to get a late winner. Ah, man, you're so close. We're almost there. Man. I, can, I can sense the system is coming together. We just have to get the players... To, you know, we got just the final tweaks only. I like to do this in preseason, but I'm doing it now. Damn it, we came this close, man, to winning our first game. Yeah, are your players concerned? It is how it means sometimes your this how to think about this one. I'm gonna go, man. Don't worry. The early days. Still early days. Okay. Alright. If I put AM, AM, then I'm depending on this guy to be a top scorer. If I play AM here, then I'm depending on these two guys to be the top scorers. How many scores do you want? So if this guy becomes okay, I can play this slightly different AMA. And I can put a share. I don't, I don't want to make too many permutations, right, of, of strikeless systems because then I'm going to be in trouble. I have to stick to one plan. 
if I start making a lot more, then what's going to happen is I'm going to have a bad run and I'm going to lose my, I'm gonna, my, my journeyman save is over. Okay, so this can work. Now, I can go for the traditional um, target man hold up ball kind of shit. Okay. Uh, and pull players out of position by moving into the channels. Okay, right. So it holds up the ball, moves into the channels to hold up the ball and then release players okay so we want somebody this is now becomes so this is like a milinkovic savage position already so he has to have jumping reach and strength so he's the only one that can play here the rest of them are lightweights in my team strength eight this guy is not he's strong but he doesn't have any jumping reach. there's no point playing him there okay so we got the passing vision and decisions at least please god give him that man don't give me a life where i don't have this kind of options with these players Okay, all right, it's like bulk basic. I mean, this is a fine note, man. We don't have the best team. I have to slowly identify the players that I need for next season. And then start hunting them down because uh, it's already December, right? So I got time, no? I got time because my whole plan was to... to you see this finances? I got 10 million in the bank, right? I got time <laughs> to turn things around. Then I will turn things around, get my formation, and then get the players I need for it. I leave to physio. Damn it. Why do I keep losing players? Okay. Uh, what about you? Can you defend? Jog, you know, useless piece of shit. Okay. Mazen, Majrashi. We got no decision making. Oh my god, decision making. Shit, your composure is bad. Oh man, you wish. You're not the best. He's not the best complete wing back. I gotta be. I gotta reduce my. I gotta lower my expectations for that boy. Okay, so maybe what I'll do is I'll get him to play as a uh, wing back. So I desperately wanted a complete wing back in this position. Okay, wing back support. That's it. Okay, let's go. Santora, sons of the beach. Let's get cracking brothers and sisters. Hey Jahid, if you want to make a 3 4 2 1 strikeless system, that's different, right? So, but it's a 3 4 2 1 strikeless system, stream 4 2 1. It can definitely work very, very well. Very, very well. In fact, it'll be very solid. Is there, is your two roles, your AM roles that I, no, your two. CM roles that are important. Because we're going to be ultra defensive, right? Because you're going to have two DMs here, you're going to have two MCs here, and you're going to have one guy here. So it's ultra defensive. It's already bad enough. Strike the systems are defensive, but that is very, very defensive. So you got a two here. I'm, I think I've got one. I'm on, I was going to start working on one. Then two here and one here. Uh, Probably looking at like. um. You need a one anchor man. I mean, okay, against the AI, you don't need to play anchor man. Don't don't play anchor man against the AI. You don't need to, right? So you play something like a DM and a volante combination that push up the pitch. Then um here in midfield, you're probably gonna be using in this midfield, you're probably using like a Mazala uh, and a ball winner, right? So the Mazala is on the side of the more creative wing bat that you wanna unleash. So he's un you unleash him, then you got a final striker in that that, that area. Then the other MC is a Mazala on attack. Because you got these two behind you. So, so is it a ball winning midfielder and a Mazala on attack? And then a Shadow Striker in front. Yeah, it's possible. But the, the idea here is you're going to win a lot of balls. But the problem with that tactic is if you... Yeah, you, you can try and go through the middle if you want. <laughs> but there's a lot of moving in the middle. Right? What do you have? 4-3. Okay. Yeah, this DM is gonna suffer. Right, we better pay attention to this game. We should be able, to, we have to be able to win this game. A DM is not gonna get the ball if we play this game right. Okay, yellow with the ball, bring it. Okay, good. All right, now you don't lose the ball. You're the worst of a lot of players, that's it. Okay, yeah, you just don't lose the ball. Okay, nice. Oi! Damn it! 
it's all coming together, but the guy just won't bury his chances. Come on, boys. Okay, we gotta encourage them. That wasn't bad, right? That movement was quite nice. Exactly what I want. Yeah. We got the wing back. Don't lose the ball. That's all I want him to do. Just don't lose the damn ball, right? And you got a ball winner there. We'll be able to put pressure on Falcao. Falcao's rating should not even see 6.7. Okay? At the time we are done with him, he's going to be lucky if it's 6.5. Falcao is never going to see the... Finally, I feel confident that we have made the perfect system for this team. With the players that they have, right? Lema looks for the looks of chilling off. Chilling off comes in, eats the boy, and gets inside. Okay, because if I see this, 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 we are gonna own this system. There's no way on God's green earth this system is gonna get out. Right? This Falcao come come six point eight. You piece of shit. I'm not gonna let you get six point eight. Drop. Let's let's choke. That DM, right? RPM, right? I'm not playing with OIs right now. Okay. Just I wanna use the I wanna use all the I mean, okay, we wanna okay, you want to do yes, I did it. You should use OIs. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go OIs. This guy. Ruben Falcao. We're gonna give him the whole tight mark. Press him. Uh, show him onto the weaker foot. Right. Give him all the love in the world. That's it. Oh yeah, we can also come in here. I mean, strikeless systems, right? I would normally do this to strikeless systems. Force these two and the goalkeeper to go long. Right, so we do pressing on them. And if you've got a keeper, show him onto the wrong foot. Why does the wingback run into trouble a lot if you don't release the ball quickly? Because the wingback is the worst place for you to lose the ball. Because if you if you lose the ball with the wingback, chances are you expose your flank. So you have to make sure that in your tactic, the wingback always has passing options. If he doesn't have passing options, you're going to run into trouble. So either your wingback is very good at running down the flanks and beating players, that means you've got a very dominant wingback, or you come up with a tactic where you give the wingback options. If you don't give the wingback options, you're gone. Yes, those. Finally, guys, after that, after all that time, we crafted... You see, this is going to be a long stream, right? I knew it uh, from the start. We're going to have to create a strikeless system for this team. Because no two teams are going to use the same strikeless system. No two teams. But also, when you play a strikeless system, you also have to know what you're playing against because, you know, you got to be able to tell why your strikeless system is doing well against certain systems. But these guys are just having the time in their lives now. Okay, we just now we can afford to, you know, bring other players on. Chelinov is playing well. And you see how important it is to play the right uh players who are positionally familiar. Now now I can you know you gotta have to retrain players as well. Like okay let's say I want to play this guy. I said, in the strikeless system, what do I do? I come to him. I say, listen, son, I know all your life you wanted to be a forward, but you are now playing for me. Okay, Your life is now about learning how to play for me. So go out there and become a shadow striker. No, I don't want to be a shadow striker. Then leave the club. Do that in your safes, right? Okay. Then drop them in. If you want to play strikeless systems, you absolutely need to retrain them for the position if they're strikers, even if you use them. Because strikers make great shadow strikers, right? If they know the position, according to SI. <laughs> in SI, if you want them to play in the AMC hole, they have to be retrained. I mean, it's true. You need to know how to link up with players and you need to know how to, you know, pass the ball on before you get into the box. Yay, we did it. I'm happy. Lamer now. I mean, since I only got two fullbacks, I better not screw things up and lose him. Where is Ethan Late? Okay. Now I know my own players. I trust me that on Friday when I do this stream again, I'll forget who my players are. You see what happens? The wingback ran out of options, so you had to hoof the ball up. And that goalkeeper is being an idiot. Okay. 
our goalkeepers being here. Striker systems do not like this hoofing of the ball. Nonsense. It's the worst thing in the world. Yeah, a strikeless system always has to have like short kicks on. I didn't put it on, right? So you don't want hoofing the ball, right? Because chances are if you if you have a strikeless system and you hoof the ball, the ball is gonna come back at you and kick you in the ass. So you better play it short. If you want to hoof the ball, then make sure that you've got tall giants in your team. You got no tall giants in your team, don't hoof the ball. So you make sure you play short. Short kicks. That's it. Don't be a hero and think that, you know, I got target man up front. I want to go and ask my keeper to kick the ball to the target man. You think my keeper has got a bloody uh, zero. He put a homing missile in the ball, is it? He press the button and the ball goes straight to the target man. The game doesn't give us that all the time. Even Gianluigi Donnarumma doesn't, in the game, doesn't kick. I tried it. I bet I got Gianluigi Donnarumma. I said, this, I've got the best goalkeeper in the world. I'm going to send it to the target man all the time. I've done it. I've created a match engine exploit. Doesn't always kick the ball to the same person. So sometimes he decides to kick to somebody else, which pisses me off. So yes. Yeah, I've done it. Finito, finito, finito. I noticed my set pieces. Some of them have been done, some of them, I haven't put the right place in the right positions yet, but my set pieces are spot on. I'm very, I like, I like my own set pieces. Okay. I hardly can see goals from corners. I mean, unless I got short asses in my team. There's only so much I can do, man. There's no magical fix to short people. I stand to stand in, I stand to stand in, uh, you know, uh, uh, we can't even play with bigger stats, can we? We got limit uh, stats have a size. Oh. I learned to get leg extensions, and we've done it. We finished our strike list. Like, wow, that was a long stream. Took me a while to get here because we had to figure out what we wanted to do with our team. That result, yeah, bounces back up into contention. Man, it took us a while, boy. It took us a while, man. Look, I bet I've been on a bad run for a while, right? So we lost to Barcelona. We lost to Utrecht. Uh, we started with Ajax, right? Oh, we started with Barcelona. We drew against Barcelona. Then we drew. No, no, no. We started with Ajax. We lost to Ajax. We lost to Utrecht. We drew to Barcelona. We drew to William Tua. We lost to Zola. Then we drew to Besiktas. We lost to Dirac. We drew to Breda and finally we beat Fortuna and Dishta. Now, now let's see how bad this is again. I guarantee you, I guarantee you, Fortuna and Dishta is somewhere in, like, you know, mid-table, right? Okay, they're probably as shite as we are. I knew it. They're somewhere here. Look, I have this, I have this theory in my head that says, right, the best, th the ones you always beat are teams in this zone. Right? Always beat. You should have no problems beating these teams. Okay. The teams you always might lose a game to is these guys at the bottom right here. For some strange reason. Maybe it only happens to me. I don't know. Does it happen to you guys? Because it happens to me a lot. All right. So look at our tactics, right? Okay. We have created one. I, I like this. I like this Feyenoord 343. Uh, Simplifies it because of this player. We turn him into a wing back when he plays. So this is a personalized role, right? So for him, it's, we're going to personalize position for this guy only. All right. Because ideally, what I want is a complete wing back. So when he plays here, this player personalized is complete wing back. When he plays here, I actually want a complete wing back. So when uh, he plays, he's a complete wing back. When my this guy plays, he's actually a wing back. Because I want this role to be a bit more gut gutsy. I want him to get up the pitch. I want him to do things. I want him to cut inside. I want him to sometimes go narrow. I want him to sometimes go wide. That's what he, the complete wing back does. But because Maj Rashi, for some reason, doesn't have all that. He's got poor concentration. Uh, sometimes he makes mistakes. So he might give the ball away. And... Uh, Chirlinov was not bad. And then we actually combined 
Well, see, this Mina, having him here, helps us on this side with this, this player. Because he's got come sleep to get the ball. So it, everything seems to gel for this tactic when he plays here. Trust me, I'm going to forget this the next time we stream. Okay? I'm going to start thinking Amina should be here and, you know, I'll forget everything. And chilling off, chilling off. Look at this. He runs. This is okay, right? Having an AM here who actually runs with the ball to the center is not a bad option. I like that. And then finally, we've got this player here, the silver. Likes to switch ball to white areas. Not like he's going to make much of a difference in his natural born life because he's playing in this position. Not like he's going to be, a, oh, yeah, I'm going to switch the ball back to here, which can be a pain in the ass. But, you know, if it could come in handy sometimes, I guess, if he goes to the channel to pick up the ball and then he, this wing back gets up the pitch, he just drops one and then it comes back across the face of the goal and we might be able to score another goal. We never know. When you use a DLP ball winning midfielder combination, you're trying to win the ball in a, uh, past the halfway line or near the halfway line. So you're trying to win the ball here. When you use a DLP on defense and a ball winning midfielder, you're asking for trouble. Okay, because this guy is going to stay here. This guy is going to run everywhere in front trying to win the ball. And then when he has to pass the ball, he's going to look back. And if there's another player on your DLP, he's going to give the ball away. Right? So you want to be careful when you think about that. This is why whenever I play a DLP and a ball winning midfielder, I always play them both on support. Right? Okay. So that's basically it, man. For little... For little thing now. Okay. Hey, Phil, I try therefore thing, but again, a lot of time setup should be good for this shape. Yeah, I can. Other shapes, right? I'm thinking of. Okay. I know somebody asked about that one. What about this circular setup? It's like the most unambitious circular setup you'll ever see in your life. Okay. <laughs> it's like, oi. We, at all costs, keep the center. This is like, this is like, uh, he shall not pass to the middle. I, <laughs> I find this a bit hilarious, but this is a, well, this is a bit much. I don't know how I managed to get my, my capture screenshot to activate for by pressing my go XLR. Um, I don't think this can work though. I mean, you'll have to try it in some of your saves, but. Mazala on a tank. Okay. The problem is these guys have to make space for these two. But only one of them. Okay. So you turn, we can leave this guy as a. Anchor man. You don't want him to be running all over the place like a bloody idiot. Okay, so what happens is this guy becomes a volante on support, right? Because we've got this guy doing the thing of a jig, and this guy becomes anchor man. All right. Okay, so what we have is potential. No, actually, this time potentially a halfback is not a bad idea. Okay. This guy could be a halfback because then a halfback will split. Come sometimes comes towards the middle. Then the volante is coming. Volante pushes up. Mazala comes here to support the wing back who is going to be attacking. Okay, Mazala comes this way. This guy, we want him to attack through the middle, right? We don't want him to go to the to the white, you know, to the white wondrous world over there. So what we want from him, he's already going to have this. We don't really need him to move into channels because if he moves into channels, we're going to lose this late arriving guy. So gets into the box is definitely a good trade. Then we have this player. We can leave him as a wing. I mean, okay. I would probably go wing back on a tank for this guy. Go forth and conquer. This guy. Go forth and conquer. Mazala will come here. Wing back will come in. No, in this particular case, maybe complete wing back on a tank. Mazala goes this way. Might go this way. Complete wing back might come this way. This could work. Shadow Striker attacks the middle. Mazala comes this way. Or uh, he, he will probably 
end up here coming to this area complete wing back goes this way or this way this is what complete wing backs do now i know some people say oh no i want it why don't you go inverted wing back bloody hell inverted wing back will still play like a wing back going down this way except okay the only the only reason why i probably might even think inverted wing back, even though there's nobody here that says inverted wing back is because this guy's got to sit narrow locked in right He's got a sit narrow locked in, right? So he's going to be a bit here inside because we can't get this unless I can come in here and wing back on the tank and do that here. Oh, I can. Oh, see, must well sit narrow here. Yeah. Because a complete wing back on the tank, you can't do that if I'm not mistaken. Yep. He stays wider. So we got Mazala going this way. So we want a. We, actually, we don't want a complete wing back now. Want a wing back on a tank. With the sit narrower instruction. Crossing to the center. That's it. Okay. Okay, so he sits narrow. This guy is that, why are we making such a complicated tactic? I don't understand. Okay, so this is this is very complicated, man. Your wing backs are gonna go down the flanks. You're gonna try and attack you. These guys will have to be stoppers. This halfback comes here. This volante will push up to support them. Move into the channels. I don't think so. You have to observe this volante's movement. But this could be one way of setting up. Wing back attack, CM on attack. Probably CM on attack is you might run out of options for. Okay, we're not going to go CM attack. We go box to box. Yeah. Go box to box with this role. Either box to box or DLP on support. Yeah, yeah, DLP on support is also not a bad option. Okay. Because this guy is going to be a more uh, static player. He's going to hold his position. So you got this guy running off him. You got this guy running off him. He's going to hold his position. And you potentially have this guy driving up the pitch occasionally with the ball. Because if there's a clearance, right? He's going to pick up the ball and he's going to bring it forward because this guy is already further forward. This guy is holding his position. So he will bring the ball all the way up to the DLP. Yeah. Alright, so we can do this. DLP. Attack, 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 attack. Four attack duties. We got structure. Yeah. That's it. That's all we need. Because whenever I go make strikeless tactics, right, I'm looking to get the fluidity to be structured. That's my nature. I like the ones that are structured. So where is our... I hope we saved the tactic man just now. <laughs> I really hope we saved the tactic. Oh, we didn't... Idiot. Oh yeah, we did what? Wing back with one player and... Uh, was it? Okay, wait, I have to remember this one. This guy is wing back. Uh, he's wing back. <laughs> Alright. This one called I understand the, the the need for double combination. So we'll save this. Copy of Fate 3430. I bet you I changed them. Yeah, I knew it. I changed it. Fate 3430. Okay. Alright. I'll remember this when I see this. I say this. Why do I put personalized instruction? I'll probably start the stream like what the hell did I blew a personalized instruction for? And then I'll depend on everybody around me to give me the answer. Oh, you did it because you... Like, I blame everybody for everything. <laughs> like yesterday, right? I was playing in the uh, playoff. I was playing this draft ball competition called the Summer Cup. And I still remember that uh, I changed a, I changed something in my tactic. I, need to, I needed to react to a tactical change somebody else made. So after I changed, the, I made a tactical change. I didn't realize that Palomino, my defender, was not a DM. So I kept watching, I, I, you know, pretend I, you know, I was always talking like, you know, talking about something else. And then all of a sudden I noticed, shit, I've got the wrong player in the wrong position. Because apparently the ass man is an idiot. Okay. And I and I went and said, wait, the chat, why didn't you tell me what's going on? <laughs> See how we deflect blame. Oh man, I feel like he's such an idiot. <laughs> I lost the game. I was so cocky and confident I was going to win. Because I was so like, yeah, I'm going to win this, man. There's no way she can beat me. 
And then I, then she swapped and I, I, I went and made a change and I was such an idiot. Yeah. Yeah. So we got our fate 3430. But I, I don't, I doubt this is going to work. I'm not even going to bother trying it. I mean, this is like super ultra defensive. Wait, wait, hold on. So DLP, attack, attack. So this guy will have to be like a attack duty, right? So he's definitely going to be an attack duty. There's no point playing him as a defend duty because I mean, what if we got? We, we're defending with seven here and then we're going to attack. But I can tell you one thing. Tactics like this, they're easy to beat. right? Because all I got to do is play a 4 2 3 one. And keep the ball. Your only hope is counter attack. So if all I do is I... If I'm playing against this tactic, all I gotta do is play a 4-2-3-1 and play with a standard defensive line. That's it. And uh I would probably play tight marking. Team instruction. Yeah. Alright, guys. I want to thank everybody for popping in. We have been on a journey to make strikeless tactics. So, yes, our journey is continuing. The goal is. All my shows right now are going to be strikeless. My forest save is going strikeless. My um, my what save is this? My journeyman save is going strikeless. And even in fantasy draft mode, I'll play strikeless. Whether or not they work is a different matter. Like I'm probably going to bungle my way because I don't make a lot of strikeless. Like I'll be very, I'll be the first to put my hand up. I don't make a lot. Have you seen me play strikeless? There are two things you hardly see me do. Play a 4-4-2, which I've done this season, and play strikers. So this season, I decided, well, fine. There's always some, some reason. There's always something I'm going to do. Well, this season, I'm playing strikers. Next season, I'm starting on strikers straight away. Because all the other tactics are not that difficult to set up. But we want to make more strikers tactics because we want to challenge the AI. We're not going to challenge the AI if uh, we play normal. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's show and found it useful. Um, once again, hit the like and the subscribe button if you enjoyed today's show. If you have any questions, always drop me a note. And for those guys who have become subscribers to the main channel, Busternet, thank you very much. Of course, uh, the main channel is, uh, there we go, Busternet. You can always slash, uh, get on to YouTube, Busternet, that's where I am. And here we do the normal thing that we do. Uh, and very soon we will be heading off to yeah we do twitch as well on sundays so thank you very much for coming on today's show you guys have been absolutely fantastic i am e exhausted it's been a long day you guys stay safe